This episode is sponsored by Battlefoam.com, now with new lower shipping prices. Hi everybody, next week on VCWar.com it is Dreadball 2nd Edition week and we have three of the amazing launch bundles up for grabs. In this epic gaming set you have the chance to win the Dreadball 2nd Edition core game, the Collector's Rulebook, the Limited Edition Blaine MVP, as well as the Galactic Tour Expansion, the Events Deck, the Mitsudo Tectonics Team and the New Eden Revenant Team. So make sure and come across and join us next week for all the Dreadball content and for your chance to win. Good morning! Welcome to the Weekender! Uh, I'm joined today by, well, the same usual guys that are joining me. I've got Ben on the yeah. screen, Justin in the chair, and Sam in the chair. Welcome back from Prague, guys. Oh, dude, it was so good. It oh, was I loved so it. good. Beautiful You've story. come back with a big one. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me happy. I got mine own stein. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Did you bring me one? No. If you haven't seen it, go and check out the uh, last week's uh, live blog yeah. uh, from the Prague Open. It looked amazing, guys. Yeah, what a great fun. fun and friendly bunch of guys uh, yeah. to game with. You yeah. see, I loved it because we had Matus from Game Mat EU organizing the event, mm -hmm. seeing uh, a tournament where every table has the same brand of terrain, same brand of mats, makes mm -hmm. it look gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to say a big thanks for uh, Matus for hosting us there. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. great fun. Took care, good care of us there. Yeah, the hotel uh, was great. Sam wanted to strangle me in my sleep. Yes, yes. That was my snoring. Yes. Was he attacking you with his steins? <laughs> 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 Trying to shove it in your wee bag. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough of that. It's my usual. I, I snore, but apparently when I snore, I cycle up. So it starts low, gets higher, gets higher, gets higher, until it's like... <laughs> And That's then interesting. Quiet. No, then he goes quiet. I'm like, okay, now I can go the. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting because last night I I had a ton of nightmares. Really? Because I I dreamt that we had forgot to organise the the hotel rooms for uh, UK Games Expo. <laughs> okay, oh, that was fun. And I we, had one like that recently. And, we, and I was standing there, and the only place that we could stay. Was a it was like a it was like a haunted dive of it was like the breeze mount <laughs> it was like where we put the boot campers oh, okay. I, <laughs> so, no, I, 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 no but it was do you know what was I mean it wasn't nice dive? it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't like it was wasn't it like dive sheet? it wasn't like the hotels that are that are on site at UK yeah, Games Expo yeah. it was like a faulty towers kind of really scary environment okay right. and uh, I, uh, they kept saying to me about the ghosts and I kept saying I don't care about the ghosts. Just make sure you put Ben and Justin in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> and then they kept going on about the ghost cycle. No, 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 you don't understand. Ben and Justin have to be in the same room. We None of us can share with them. They have to be in the and same room. And after that, they never had a problem with ghosts again. <laughs> oh, they, they are the two nighttime jackhammers, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Ben's the gates of hell and the jackhammer. Although, so it's going to be fun because I organized the room for it. So, Ben, how do you cope with the jackhammer in your hotel room at night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, and, I set myself and, up. And does he yes, bring his yes, stuff? Yes, <laughs> Yes, you did. Excuse me, I'm very happy with my stein. This is my new drinking mug. Right, right, enough, enough. It does show the uh, Charles Bridge. We did get to do a little bit of sightseeing at the end yeah. there. I'm yeah. not having yeah. this go under close camera and get tipped because it's full. Okay, yeah. so thanks for new community member Midget for showing us around, actually. Yeah. Perfect, and uh, do go and check out. If you want to see a 40k tournament done extremely well. Yeah. Um, go and check out the, the, the live blog coverage from the Prague Open. It, it was a real eye-opener. And, you know, um, I've just got to say, if we could import every single player there and keep them here as our Beasts of War gaming club, yeah. <laughs> uh, the tickets would be on their way to you guys, well, you know, because uh, you were all fantastic. You do realize it's cheaper for us to go and visit them? <laughs> Just flights to Prague? Yeah, I, I, I ain't getting no plane. <laughs> so oh, yeah, we have a fun. prize. Oh, yes. We have a prize. Yeah. We, we, we have two prizes, actually. We are giving away, in this episode, I'll be showing them off later on, yes. uh, but we are giving away um, an engraved, oh. engraved to whatever you want, yeah. um, painting station from Frontier Wargaming. Yeah, so. so this is ours. Um, you can see with the, the beautiful uh, beastofwar.com. Which reminds me, buy merch. 
This is not merch. The hottest merch in the game here on BC4. <laughs> it is totally dope. It is totally lit. And remember to smash that like button. Isn't that what they say, or is it the subscribe button? <laughs> smash the buttons! Enough of that. Yeah. Back deep to breaths, the painting station. Deep breaths. So this is the painting station. I'm going to show it off a bit later on. So I'm not sure whether to open it up now or not. Well, let me let me just do a wee tease. Let me just do a wee tease, okay? I will say this makes my Woo! there you my go. Genre heart go. Aww. All right, so we've got the big one. One of you is going to win the big one. And we also have the cute little Tony one. Look at this one here. Right, this is one I believe is set up as the miniatures case. Yeah. So this one. Um, it has it has a BC4 logo on it, which reminds me, buy merch. It's the hottest <laughs> merch. Oh, I've been there, done that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, again, let me just let me just. Oh, doo -doo. All right. We'll show you more about that later. <laughs> so if you want to be in with a chance of winning those, yes. Stay tuned to the end of the show, and we'll tell you how you can win it. Mm. <laughs> okay. Right. This weekend, we. The royal we, yes. Uh, the Followed other by the royal flush. The other American half of Beast of War yes. are live blogging from Adepticon, so uh, be sure to join the the live blogs there. Get your comments in because we're giving away some awesome goodies and an Adepticon swag bag. Ooh, so you can join nice. Don, Gianna, and uh, their their other their their other their helpers their helpers <laughs> as they give us all of the the goodies and the lowdown of what's happening at Adepticon this year. Next week is Dreadball Second Edition week. Yes. Um, Justin got to spend some time with Rob from Atlantic. And Sam and John. And yeah. Sam and John. So they, yeah. they yeah. Got all we got too. to play some games, and that was so much fun. Yeah. Um, it's a whole week looking at the new teams and some games um, uh, from Dreadball Second Edition. Uh, how many games will we put out next week? Do we uh, know? Next week, I think there's only two plus a turn break. Then. The, the, so there's two plus a uh, And then there's, sure? yeah, there's, I think there's I two. No, you f there were you filmed two more and they're going out outside. All right, so oh, we, yeah. we have a couple more to follow it up on, but we have games, we have uh, faction team chats, yep. we have mm. all of that going yeah. out, yeah. and we have three massive prize bundles to give away. Yeah, so these are the the Dreadball Second Edition launch bundle, right? Mm -hmm. So we have three of these to give away. Now I'm actually going to get my my sheet here because there is a boat buttload of stuff in this. So you get the Dreadball 2nd Edition core set, the Collector's Edition rulebook, the Limited Edition Blaine MVP, the Galactic Tour expansion, the Event Deck expansion, the Mitsudo Tectonics team, and the New Eden Revenants team. And you even get all of that in Justin's presenter voice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That was an excellent QVC did, voice. When when you were playing, did you have a particular favourite team? Oh, which one was it? It was the the Neobots, the robot oh, team. Oh, the so. all Draconis All Stars. Yes, yeah. yes, they were very very fun to play with. I think I, I think I'm still Corporation to the. Uh, I, I I still well, love my the, the Corporation team. In there, I doing have, their thing. I have a new love, the Matsudo Tectonics. Yeah, big yeah. sumo lizards. I yeah. loved them. They were so much fun. Yeah, there's some awesome stuff on the way for Dreadball, so definitely check it out um, uh, next week. Yeah, We're going to have a lot of fun. In. Yeah, going to have mm -hmm. a lot of fun with that. Um, right, on the topic of Mantic, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we got an update on Hellboy. Yes. yes. I am very excited this. We got the, the 3D print. 3D print? Yeah, the print of the new Hellboy sculpt. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was a print, not a resin cast? Resin cast, sorry. <laughs> It'll be a resin cast from a print, yeah. so there we yeah. go. Whatever it is, it looks beautiful. And Lance took it home that night and painted it all up. You can watch it on yes. this site here. Oh, so we we have the stream archive up on the site. So it, it yeah. took it was, so it's so it's, it's about two hours of, of fun and conversation and chat yeah. while Lance uh, actually uh, got it painted up. So yeah. yes. I have it, I have it here. Yes. So when you check out, whoa, his wrist. There it is. Lance did a no. really nice job on this. The shading is great. Now the Isn't thing, that beautiful? Lance set uh kind of set himself the challenge here of painting it in the style of Mike Mignola's art. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if I reach down here, I've brought some of my Hellboy comics for us to compare. Just so, look at that. Yeah, so, if we, take that <laughs> so if we if get we... if we get the art. Uh, so let me just see. So there's the art. Yeah. And there's He's the mini. Pretty close. He does indeed. He's got that really strong shadow and yeah. contrast of colours going on there. Isn't that cool? It's I tell you what though, mm. aside from the paint job, the mini is flipping great. Yeah. 
you know, the Mini is a really, really nice piece of work. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to actually see what happens with this game whenever it actually gets put down on the tabletop, how yeah. it's going to play out, what sort of a style of game we're going to see. You know, it's coming from James M. Hewitt at Needy Cat Games, and James, I know, is a fantastic rules writer, and it's definitely going to be something very cool. It's a board game. Mm. Oh, yes. It's a board game, but for a lot of you long-time Beast of Wars out there, um, I did I did stick my, my neb in and say, you know, at some point, you know, some if we could have some rules that break it out of the board game, kind of a la Walking Dead style, Ooh, um, yes. I'm pretty sure we could do an amazing Hellboy style boot camp yeah. here on, on something like that. Oh, but yeah. even, don't, don't please, tell me, Warren. But even as a board game, can you imagine, the way I pitched it, you know, let Mantic know, can you imagine, okay, we do the whole hobby hall mm. um, a la New York City, yeah. okay, with so all, all of the buildings and everything, oh, and it's Hellboy jumping in and out of buildings, chasing mm. monsters, and we do the sewers. And of course, yeah. Uh, you, there, there's one table that has to be made then, which <laughs> is the auction house, where the from the Golden Army, where they break into it and mm -hmm. they, the bit of the crown's being sold. Yeah. Having like a full floor of a building laid out that you could fight through could be so cool. Yeah, yeah. I've got, so Hellboy does not just take place around New York City. He no, goes of course all not. over the world. So he... he's in the north coast of Ireland, yeah. talking to uh, talking to a, yeah. a munchkin from yeah. Balamone. Uh, was it their, uh, <laughs> oh, you met my family and the catacombs in Eastern Europe. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's all sorts of places. Loads and loads mm. of Japan as well. Yeah, which I love. I I think uh, uh, well. We, you know, we'd get we'd get some Japanophile eye on that one. It would be, uh, I'm never living that one down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Never, so, ever, ever. But um, absolutely, you know, regardless, I am I am very keen to see if we can if we can uh, somehow get in, get a some kind of a Hellboy uh, event, even if the uh, the playing of the board game and stuff like that, because I am just all over Hellboy, one of my favorite franchises mm. of all time. It's just so. Yeah. Flipping cool. Are you going to but be it, borrowing these then? It does. I have these. Oh, excellent! It, so. it did provide me with my one most hated movie character of all time, though. Right. The Goblin King, in Ireland. That little guy's accent was going three miles up the road, five miles the other way, two miles that way, and four miles that <laughs> ah, way. Ah, that's just the TV. That's just yeah. how it goes. No, that's no, just no, how no, it goes. no. That was not a, a direct dialect. That was just a mishmash of Irish accents just turned into a pot of right. Talking about the North Coast, yeah. Okay, um, uh, I've I've lovingly recreated the North Coast, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. um, for a new game that's coming out that has quickly become one of our favourites. Okay, okay, it's called uh, Dogging in the Red Skies. <laughs> so it's um, no, it's not. What's it called? Oh, sorry, Blood Skies. Blood Red Skies. Okay, of course, I'm that almost is worse. <laughs> so Blood Red Skies. We are we're, we are all over it like a rash. We love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's time. I know it's time because I can feel it in my joints. I'm nervous. I can feel it in my bone. It's time <laughs> for Warren meets Matt. So we have, ah. we have, what do you call it? We, we, we It's not called a double ender. What uh, is it called? Double a double feet, bill. Double a bill. Double bill. Double I, have bill. Double bill. I have a double bill of yeah. mats for you today. We are, we are soaring through the skies. Yes. We are dogging. We are doing all of the great stuff. Fighting. Dog fighting. Sorry, dog, dog fighting. fighting. We are right dog fighting uh, our way through the blood red skies. And we needed mats, and yes. Deep Cut came through. This one is called... Waterworld. Waterworld. Yep. And... Well, <laughs> there's not a lot to say about it. It's just awesome. If you need a water mat... Ding! Honestly, this is it. The best thing for this mat in particular is the fact it's so blank, you can lay things like our big sponge cliffs on it, and yes. they blend straight in. Yeah, as you Warren don't have was... to worry about other features just blocking you. Yeah, as yes. Warren was saying that to me earlier, this is basically our north coast we've created here. Yes, because um, the well, the north coast of Ireland, we don't know if there was any dogging ever took place around the north fighting. coast. Fighting, dog fighting. 
definitely none of that was ever took place around the north coast of Ireland. Um, maybe some others. I, I don't know. But anyway, we recreated what? the north coast. Stop laughing, cameraman. <laughs> Hold it steady. The north coast of Ireland has been beautifully recreated. If you ever want to see this, okay. Well, do we do we need not... like the Carcarid Root Bridge in here? Yeah. Well, or, or watch Hellboy Two. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Hellboy Two has some beautiful scenes of this here. Yeah. But I just thought, you know, if you were going to do. If you were going to be get involved in dogging, this is definitely dog fighting. Sorry, dog fighting. If this is this can also be the south coast of England, away from the White Cliffs of Dover, where it's not White Cliffs. The the brownie cream cliffs of not Dover. <laughs> of non-Dover. Of non-Dover. 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 Um, right, to talk about the mat. Normally I talk about resolution and stuff like that, but it's just a bunch of waves. But it's the versatility of uh, an ocean mat, of a sea mat. This is obviously North Atlantic blue, yes. wouldn't you say? Yes. Although here's a question for you. How many times have you tried to create an ocean mat at home and ended up with it just shiny as hell? I did create an ocean board. Yes, and it was shiny yeah. as hell. It was, it, it was Do you remember that one? Shiny. Shiny. Give me the shiny Hellboy. But I will <laughs> take that shiny. What are you going to ask me? I was just, no, I remember that one that was made for uh, Cutlass. You just used printouts for that, didn't you? Yes, we've, we've done it a few ways. Yeah. So for Cutlass... Um, we we printed out stuff, yes. uh, and it was okay. Kind of worked. I created a eight by four ocean table. Now the way I did that was by filling a paddling pool. Not quite. That would have been easier. <laughs> um, I got a, a eight by four piece of board. Yeah. Okay. I then got tin foil. Yes. Okay, and I put down a whole heap of PVA mm. over the board, yeah. the, the and then put the tin then crinkled the tin foil, yeah. and then put it down over the top of the board. And did you colorize the PVA before you put it down or afterwards? No, no, no. Just PVA, then tin foil, and let the tin foil be all crinkly. Uh -huh. Okay, and then you kind of leave the tin foil flat. Here's a here's a, a prime tip for you: if you're doing it, don't lay it out in sheets because you see the banding. Uh -huh. Cut your tin foil up. And put your tin foil down in kind of randomized patches, flat patterns. like a like a like a what like was a it the Romans did for us mosaic mosaic yes so, so, so yeah, basically <laughs> think Picasso yeah so uh, uh, irregular I don't think Picasso did mosaics irregular no, shapes seen his work yes irregular shapes yes then you get a whole bunch of blue and green paints from your local art store go for the the ones in the tubes that are about two or three bucks per per tube. Yeah. And get some blues and greens and squirt it on like a milk and a cow. All over it. How do you milk? I milk pop 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 cows, okay? Then you get your big brush and you paint the whole thing and you blend it all together and you get your blues and your greens and stuff like that. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Then Yeah, go on. Then you go and get yourself a big ass tub of clear ultra hard varnish. Okay? And you start painting on layers of varnish and yeah. you let it dry completely and then you paint on another layer of varnish yeah. and you end up with a big beautiful shiny ocean board yeah, yeah. But, but this is yeah. far handier if you don't have yeah. the time for all that this one mine. mine doesn't roll up yeah. mine is very very shiny which is okay in some ways because we know water is, is kind of shiny it doesn't <laughs> quite look like shiny water though but if you want something that's easy to roll up Looks lovely, and when you put your, your terrain and stuff like this, is just made from sponge. Yeah. Go and watch Backstage. Join Backstage on Beast of War, and Lloydie has a tutorial on how he creates yeah, so all this stuff. It's, if you look close, it's squidgy. It's squidgy. Flat packable. Uh, yeah, so we have full tutorials on how to build all this stuff. Yes. So that is Waterworld by Deep Cut. Yes. We'll show you another one. Yeah, right. of course. This... Oops. It's all like kinds of beautiful. This one's also by Deep Cut. Uh, this is uh, uh, done by the their uh, artist that does some stuff for him called Jan Jadzinski. And Jan is a genius with the Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And this mat is called, Justin? Um, I forget, Sam. I've forgotten. <laughs> well, I'm going to get the running order while you, you go talk about yeah, this. You go yeah, you go find get out the running order. order. Now, this one, we do have think, to talk about resolution. I think I can see my house from here. Yeah, it, the, this is insanely great. So you can see the, the resolution of all of the trees and yeah. the bushes you and shrubberies. You can see the little uh, haystacks that would be yep. piled up in the hill. Well, they're more, likely, the they're more likely to be hay bales, hay bales. Yeah. Than, a, than a haystack. Hay, yeah. Haystacks is maybe a little old hat. But you can see all of the 
individual farm buildings, like you are at substantial height here. You are proper up high dog fighting, mm. uh, dog fighting height now. So yeah, and what is the name, Justin? Right, uh, let me do this bit. So this evening on the BBC, it's the aerial fields map. It's the aerial fields map. I probably could have guessed that, but it's it's always nice to keep it right. <laughs> uh, deep cut studio aerial fields. Yeah. Um, if you are doing anything with it in the aerial combat, I highly recommend this. And I want to put to deep cut a challenge. Oh, for, you want them to do cool rain? For the amazing Jan Yazinski. Jan, could you have a crack at a Star Wars X-Wing mat? Like oh. this? Um, where, where, where it's basically a planet surface, mm. maybe of Yavin 4 or something like that. Because we all know that X-Wings, TIE Fighters and things like that are quite happy to fight in atmosphere. Yep. How cool would it be to have one of the iconic uh, Star Wars yeah. worlds recreated at this scale? Could, could do could the cool. uh, Starkiller base. Um, oh, you could cheaper do. Star Killer base yeah. would be something of awesome, wouldn't it? So there's Star Killer base. Yep. There is. There's the obvious one, Death Star. Of yep. course. You could do yep. Tatooine. You could do because Tatooine. Because it's, it's scattered villages. Well, stuff. I would. I'd be more likely to see if you, if you maybe did Moss Eisley. No, it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and I know. But the other one would be Yavin Four, mm. an attack um, on Yavin Four taking uh, taking place at some point. Yeah. There, there's a ton of amazing Star Wars ones. Uh, but I'm just thinking. Imagine having X wings mm. swooping around. Well, I've over actually like had that. the good fortune to play Blood Red Skies on this map. Yes. It feels so so nice. Yes, I, I I thought it would. I can't wait to to get a a, a try at it myself. There, remember, there's other games. We we talk about the versatility of these games. So, Blood Red Skies is an obvious one. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wings, Wings of, Glory. of Glory. Yep. Yep. So Wings that of Glory is another one. Ones. Um, maybe later on. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the what what the plan is, but. Um, was there not some air aspects, air units in the dystopian wars and stuff like that um, at that time? Not sure. I don't think they did aerial combat. I don't think combat. they did a full aerial combat. They there did. used to be one called Leviathans, which was uh, similar. That yes, was aerial. Leviathans. That was a different company, aerial. though. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is, uh, this is a map of... A fairly narrow need, right? So, but if you're going to be playing any of the, the air combat games, and definitely keep an eye out for Blood Red Skies because it is fabulously good. Yeah, fabulously good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This is this is a great map to have, uh, either for yourself, your mates, or your club. Yeah. Flop it out, and away you go. Yeah. No, I I will say the planes we have on here are probably historically inaccurate P fifty ones and zeros. Yes. They wouldn't have fought over this kind of terrain, so uh, no. if wouldn't we they? could maybe get like a Pacific map done they like would have this. Fought, they would have fought over paddy fields. Uh, yes. So they would have... Oh, there's a good one. Yes, something Pacific there's a good one. Rice paddy fields. Um, uh, Jan, I'm back at you again. <laughs> the, the Paradise Planet. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of it from Rogue One. Where the um, where the all of the... Oh, the where, the where the Death Star plans were yeah. held. Imagine that one. That would be a good one. And the, the other reason that that might be kind of cool is if you did that and didn't put uh, too much Star or did two versions of it, one with Star Wars-y kind of elements on it and one with that layer turned off, yeah. that would do as a Pacific map yeah. Yeah. for your Pacific-type yeah. air battles. Although, oh, it? There's one of the companies I think has done 2D terrain elements that you can roll out. Mm -hmm. If you could get like a, a silhouette from a company of like a... An aircraft carrier, battleships, you could do attack runs on ships. Oh, oh there's so much opportunity, that isn't there? That could be fun. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, so, yeah, over to you, Deep Cut. The, the, the challenge has been laid down. It'd be interesting to see what you can do. That is that. That is a, an epic double ender, sorry, double bill feature <laughs> um, of uh, Warren Meets Matt. What's well, time to get back at it? Yeah. Back at it. The new Flames of War 4th edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. A world of hideous nightmares awaits in Kingdom Death Monster. Fight to survive or fade into darkness at the Kingdom Death Hub at beastsofwar.com. 
There you go. Mm, that was a double ender. I know. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> I want to play more Blood Red Skies. Oh. It has really captured my imagination. This week, um, John was uh, live streaming the painting yes. of, yes. Uh, uh, of the, the starter set. So he was painting some Spitfires and some Messerschmatts. Um, so uh, we, we're probably going to get him to, to paint some more because we're going to try and get a big ass dog fight going yeah. on. Although I want him to see, to see him do the, the P-51 Mustangs as the the red tails. The Tuskegee oh, Airmen. That's, oh, yeah. that's a good idea. That's John was saying cool. to me actually that it, that um, with the paint schemes, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of opportunity for different kinds of color schemes. Oh yeah. Um, even even on the 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 likes of the Spitfire, I believe they had a pink Spitfire reconnaissance aircraft. is yeah. what it was. And so I, the the concept behind it was, you know, the way the the sky is like orangey pink at dawn and dusk. Yes. So that was like camouflaging for flying at that time of day, trying to track is not, enemy is not awesome. Movements. Isn't wow. that absolutely awesome? Yeah, yeah so cool. there's there's loads of really cool things yeah, you can uh, you can do with this stuff. It, it makes me want to dig out a, a film I haven't seen in a long time, a Toro Toro Toro. Which, uh, you remember? Yeah, was Star Wars not based off Toro Toro Toro? Th- no, George no, no, Lucas. George no, Lucas that was, was based on um, Throne of Blood by Akira Kurosawa, I believe. It's George Lucas was a massive fan of um, uh, the old war movies. Yeah. Um, it's, and the, the in uh, A New Hope, all of the X wings and the dogfights and stuff were all inspired by uh, dogfighting movies. Ah, mm. And if Tora 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 wasn't it wasn't an inspiration for A New Hope, then it's in my mind for some reason. And I think it was possibly an inspiration for um, Last Jedi. I think uh, for the bombing uh, the bombing sequence. I can't remember off the top of my head, but that whole bombing sequence mm. at the start of the Last Jedi was inspired by uh, an old Second World War yeah. uh, fighter movie of some well, sort. Definitely so got to go back and watch it. The Star Wars movies were a bit of a mashup of like three genres that I can see. So you had old samurai movies, westerns, yep. and World War II dogfighting movies, yeah, all set in yeah. space. Yeah, it, it, and that, that was why the original ones worked just so well. Yeah. yeah. They, were, they, they really were... Yeah, it, Something for everyone. They're a prime example mm. of how things can go great mm. when you have severe constraints. Mm. Okay. Because um, what I, I I've been getting into my Star Wars now because of Star Wars Legion. I, really, you haven't mentioned it at all. <laughs> Have I mentioned the fact that I'm totally hooked on Star Wars at the moment? So, I I really need like a miniature of a horse right now, just write hobby on the side of it. I have learned more about Star Wars in the last uh, two or three weeks mm. than I have in the previous thirty five years. Mm. Thirty five, yeah, thirty thirty seven years of fandom. Mm. Okay, I have been a, f- a fan of Star Wars. There are two types of fan of Star Wars. Okay, mm. and to me, both equally, um, um, equally good, the, the, of equal value. There are those fans who are fans of the Star Wars movies. Okay, and typically, what would happen if they would have had the movies and they would have had the toys, and they, they, they their knowledge would have been restricted to the movies and the toys, yeah. and uh, maybe have branched out, possibly. Into some of the cartoons like Rebels and uh, or maybe some Cl- of the books. Clone Wars. Some of the more likely the video games, to be yeah. honest. You know, mm. uh, unlikely the I've books. I've said before. I'll yeah. say it again. Kotor is one of the greatest yeah. RPGs I've ever played. Yeah, well, the, the, that particular type of fan, which I was, you know, would have been all over the movies. Would have been over some of the early video games, right up to Battlefront and stuff. Mm. Now, uh, might have went towards the Clone Wars and to Rebels. Possibly, it depends. Mm, you know, mm. a lot of movie lovers don't necessarily gravitate towards cartoons, and you know, you have to be. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the animation style in either of those two mm. uh, those two series. Okay, the books probably not likely. You know, the, on the expanded universe, you then get the other kind of Star Wars fan who is uh, gone way beyond the movies. Mm. Okay. Has went totally into the extended universe. Uh, it will be all over Clone Wars, all yes. over um, uh, the Rebels, um, and will be into Wikipedia and uh, just all the way through it. <laughs> yeah, Wikipedia. Uh, haven't you come across Wikipedia? Uh, no, I've not seen Wikipedia. Wikipedia is is great. It's a god among websites now. You know, second only to bc 4com <laughs> By March, <laughs> um, so it's second only to vc4.com. But I, I am whiling away my days on Wikipedia. I'm going to be showing off some more Star Wars stuff on XLBS tomorrow for our backstagers because I am on an absolute crusade mm. of how I can make some of the f- most awesome gaming tables to play Star Wars on. Yeah. But as I was saying, I have learned more about Star Wars in the last three weeks than in, in the previous 35 years of fandom Mm. and uh, it's just the universe is just so vast 
and there's just so many opportunities mm. for the kinds of things that you you can do so um on tomorrow's show i'm going to be talking a bit about some more models uh, some more things that i've picked up yeah um, the to, to use on the gaming tables as uh, spaceships and terrain and yep. stuff like that mm -hmm. but i'm also going to start talking a little bit about my idea for my first uh, conversion of of creating a new piece right within the star wars universe of my own ah so we're going back to gaming in the gaps so i'm going to, i'm going to start looking at, at some gaming in the gaps because what i want to what i want to have a look at is we all know about the imperial navy as in the imperial navy that does all of the space fighting mm. but there was also an imperial navy as in navy the ocean one, navy ocean and under ocean so Ooh, there, there's some yeah. really cool stuff that that, that I, I i want to to have a look at right let me show off today's prize because yes. I, I want I want to let you have a look at it. So, so this is the painting station portable from painting station from Frontier Wargaming. Yes. What can you guys tell me about this? So, well, it's a big <laughs> it's a big painting station. It's got everything you need it's to wood. carry your hobby it's around wood. with you. Yeah. The co the cool thing about this is all the components inside can be bought separately as well. Mm -hmm. So you can buy and rearrange the cases as you want them so mm -hmm. a modular system yeah yeah pretty much okay well uh, let's get a let's get a, a look inside so this is the once again just to show the outside yeah okay it's got a nice hard varnish finish to yeah. it yeah so this one has the beast of war logo on now we will double check okay the one that we're giving away as a prize will either have the beast of war logo on it or possibly some engraving of your choice, but it'll be one of the two. I'm not I exactly believe sure which it, it, it will also have the Frontier Wargaming. Okay, that's that. grand. Yeah, but so who, who wouldn't want let's, this with our logo on it? Eh? Let's buy have, merch. Buy merch. Yeah, let's have a look inside. Right, right, I'm gonna put my stein. See if okay. Away. So it opens up like that. It's got little kind of hooks and little bits that you can put your fingers into here yeah. to mm -hmm. pop it open. Okay, well, just pop it open like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you get inside, you have a work. Works workspace. Yeah. Okay. So like a uh, a place where you can work. Uh -huh. I would probably have a look at um, maybe putting a piece of uh, film protector or something over that, Justin. So That's an possibly, but it, it, it is varnished. Now I yeah. would try and put a cutting mat onto it because the actual tolerance is this. You don't really have a recess here that you can put one into. Yeah. Then do you know what I would look for? I would look for um, kind of one of them self adhesive um, A4 kind of sheets, just so as I can paint on it, and then if I spill paint on. I can always just whip off. I would put a diamond adhesive. coat varnish onto it, and then just wipe, wipe and then clean. Just, you can just wipe it clean. Yeah, just something that's going to give you a nice smooth coat that just can be wiped off. Yeah. Then um, yeah. does your does your hobby home workstation have a diamond coat? Uh, um, no, 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 no. It it just has a a, a cutting mat. Oh, it and I, I'm, I'm still working on what I want to add to it. I'm looking at modular <laughs> systems. Ben, <laughs> behave yourself, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's okay, Justin. Never worry. Is right, it, uh, one back, one the, the, <laughs> back to the back to this. Okay. <laughs> so inside uh, we have um, lots of little uh, drawers. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to start pulling out drawers. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I pull out drawers, I want you two guys to start telling me what you're going to do with them. Okay. So let's start with this one here. Yeah. So okay. that one actually already has in it what I would probably put in it. Your strap. Yes. Yeah. And any painting. Uh, paint brushes or anything like that. Okay, so it comes with a strap. Yes. The strap hooks onto the sides as As so. I said, this is completely portable. It's great for yep. when you want a hobby on the go. And another one goes onto there. Yeah, well, then, like, so, how many times have you turned up to your, your like local hobby club and there's nowhere really set up for you to actually set up your hobby? Yeah. None, because this is my local hobby club. So. <laughs> but he's right. He's yeah. right. And it, it, you know, it's. Um, uh, I, I, I'm I really. You have all of your own stuff with you. I, 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 I hate using other people's brushes and stuff. I hate borrowing stuff. And yeah, I ruin it. Well, and you get used to using your own stuff. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so we have. Um, if I can show you, there's, it's really nice the tolerances of this stuff, and it just, it just yeah, goes together all so together. nice. Yeah. It all puts together very well. So I, I'm with Justin on this. I think um, some of the little pens that you use for um, drawing on. Um, purity seals and stuff like that and definitely yeah. your brushes and stuff yeah. in there brushes and okay. even some glues and stuff you can yeah. maybe pop into there um, next one we have this one here yeah. justin i it's think already filled yeah there's a series of five of them i will show you what this does in a second uh for that one games workshop pots would fit perfectly into that i'd right. say you could get a set of at least nine maybe more into there yeah i would actually use most of these smaller trays for bits and pieces yeah so okay. I, I could keep all of the loose pieces that i currently 
knocking around all over my room. No, what are, are these? Can I see one? No. no. Are these I what I think, think so. they are? I think what these are is you put your miniatures onto these oh, and yes. you use these for painting. And then what they do Double is they go me, in yeah. to that. Ah, yeah. And then that is where you can store the minis that you're currently working yeah. on. A tray with six miniature holders. So that this be it. comes out, okay, and then the, the minis that you're actually working on at any one time can go into that. You already have them set. That's, That's a clever very idea. Good Isn't that piece. lovely? Yeah. And then you get plenty of miniature height after that, so mm. there's no problem with them being in there. Yeah, I do like the fact that each of these actually goes into a dual slot drawer and not just a flat uh, level drawer, yeah. so it doesn't bounce up and down a lot. Mm. Yeah. So I'll put that one back. Um, uh, I'm curious now, everyone I've opened has something in it. Okay, we've got an empty <laughs> one. Okay, these is what I would probably keep my paints in, because mm, yeah. I think the paints will fit into them, no problem at all. It says that there are three paint racks, which I think are actually those oh, trays these on the, here, on the yes. right. Uh -huh. And they can, hold, sure of. they can hold 96 Vallejo or oh 54 Pet Citadel paints. Okay, right, so then I'm with Sam on this. So use these as my paint racks, mm. okay? Because um, I wonder what way they they go so if they go like that i wonder can that one go above yeah, yeah it's as i said line it up. you can buy separate components for it so you can add to this as you yeah see so from. you can you can change what uh, what goes in and out of it yeah, yeah? they have some uh, magnetic trays as well for your minis which yeah. i think we'll see later in the smaller miniatures case and this is where i need uh, tiny skinny little fingers like justin argh, to get in there right i can't get in can you get it in there justin Got it. Do you need even smaller ones? Do you need even smaller ones? It's wedged right. in there, tiny. Yeah, we need yeah. Sam's even tinier one. No, 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 no it. Justin got it in. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you just need and to be a little delicate with it. Pick and it's empty! <laughs> it's, it's empty! But I just needed to be sure it was empty. And yes, it is It is totally empty. So, um, I would be tempted to either put some padding in there and put my other minis in it. Um, or possibly bits or any other uh, bits and bits. See, uh, like green stuff, things like that. Yeah. You would put yeah. into there, your modeling Basic, supplies. Basing materials yeah. and yep. things like that. Uh, even resin custom bases. Because mm -hmm. I know some people, they, they paint on cork and wire. Yeah. So if you actually put like a custom bases into there that you're then putting your miniatures yeah, on. Yeah, and your cork and stuff. Right. Yep. It has one other little little yes. mcgovern right yeah. i think so, this is the I feature you like yeah this, i think this, this is, is a particularly cool detail to add to a painting station so what typically happens you go along to your local hobby place yeah. right and you, the lighting is always a bit gash well, right? it's yellow yes. it's generally a, a normal light is going to be yellow it's pretty, pretty bad in problem. my own home this comes with its own light now spread the legs okay i uh, got the legs spread how far would it spread them? Uh, right there, right there. That's there. wide enough. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Ben's keeping a straight face. Good I man, think it's ben. gonna crack. <laughs> Good man. Um, it, I'm gonna. Yeah. No, there's no light switch on it. Okay. I've tested this. No. So what I'm gonna do? Plug it in, and it's on. I'm gonna bring in one of these. Yeah. Okay. Thanks to Gianna, because yeah. we're, we're wiring up uh, some additional uh, plugs and stuff into the hobby hall. Mm -hmm. We uh, did it. We built a wall of doom in the hobby hall. I'll be showing it off on backstage tomorrow. Yeah. And I wanted to put in some um, extra plugs and places where people could charge their phones whenever they come to visit us. Yeah. The and problem is we have people visiting from everywhere. So uh, Gianna recommended these ones, which have plugs that does everything. Yeah. And we're about to find out if they actually do everything. So, universal socket. What we do, USB we have points. a little bit that goes in here. Yeah. Okay. And then this. <laughs> either way. Does it go into this it, one? Either way. Hey! <laughs> and there it goes. It works. I tell you what, if you grab Hellboy, we can actually yep. see how he's yep. lit up there. And the Lord said, let there be light. And he was pleased until the devil created electricity built. And it was good. <laughs> And there we go. And that's high enough that you're not going to be bumping your head into it whenever you lean down over your paints. Tell you what. You like it, don't you? That's quite a good setup. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. I like I'll admit, this. I've, I've had my eye on this since it came in the, in the right. studio. The only thing I would love to see for this, yeah. to make, if I could make a suggestion yeah, for yeah. an upgrade, yeah. is instead of having the power pack like this, uh -huh. Have it as one. I have one at home that runs off a USB plug. Mm -hmm. So what you could do is, you know the, the power banks you get now? Mm -hmm. Just plug it into that, 
and then your light would turn on from like a little portable battery pack. So a uh, a strip light that is powered by USB. Yes, I would have it powered by USB. That's the only upgrade I would make to this particular set. Yeah. Uh, if you go to your uh, your local club and they don't have power, no light. So how would you power it off USB? Off a little battery pack? Yeah, you know the, the uh, portable yes, power banks yes, you get? portable power bank. Because yeah. uh, I've actually tested it. The one I have at home will run off uh, like a 30 quid power bank that I bought. Uh -huh. And it, it, it'll run for maybe an hour and a half, which yeah. is more than enough for if I'm at the club working on something. Yeah. I tell you what, I like this. And uh, one of the reasons I, I, I like it is it's organized and it keeps everything self-contained. Yeah. Let me show you the difference that light makes, okay? So let me just unplug that. So pop, and, yeah, then... and you can instantly see the color change. Mm. Yeah, uh, I remember whenever I first got my my white light and put it onto my desk. Yeah, the change it made to what I could actually see on my miniatures. There were so many bits that I had missed, just in like little bits and crevices that were in under stuff where yeah. I just I hadn't got color or paint, and it was so annoying when I saw it. I I've actually still been revisiting some of my old miniatures, going, "Did I miss anything?" Yep, right there. Yeah. I think having something like this would actually encourage you to paint. Mm. I think if you were going through a bit of a painting burnout, mm. um, which I have suffered a lot in the past, yeah. um, having something like this where you have your project kind of self-contained, yeah. you know, and, and what I like about this... It's a workstation in a box. It, yeah. narrows, it narrows the view, mm. okay? Because um, one of the things that we've talked about, we've talked about this um, uh, about uh, hobby burnout on, on XLBS and backstage now mm. um, for a little while. And one of the things that we talk about sometimes is whenever uh, whenever the, your, your, your work desk becomes so broad with stuff, mm. it gets very, very difficult. Whereas what I like about this is if I had one of these, okay, mm. uh, you could go to wherever is quiet. Yeah. And you just drop it down. It's completely self-contained. So I can narrow my view of my hobby to just this, just this bit, yeah. and I think that that would give me it would give me the incentive, and give me the the lack of distraction, so that I could actually focus just on uh, on what I'm trying to focus on. Mm. That is very interesting for for myself. What this would be great for is someone who's at home with the family and doesn't actually have a hobby room to themselves. No, me. Yeah, yeah, but say you're you're a husband, your missus doesn't like your stuff being out everywhere around the house. Mm -hmm, yeah. One self-contained unit, you're set. You can pop it down on the, the kitchen table. She's not worried about you getting mess onto the, your, your dining room table or anything yeah. like that. And you can take it out, work, pack it away really quickly, and it just goes into like a cupboard or something nice and handy. And it just it keeps everything... In, I've got to the say, there's something psychologically interesting about sitting at this. Yeah. <laughs> it is really, really strange. But I mean, it feels really good. Yeah, it feels really good. That it, wee light made all the difference. Before are you gonna that, keep? Are you gonna keep it there for the rest of the weekend? And just I've sitting heard, there. This is. It, you know what? It, it, it maybe maybe it's seasonal adjustment disorder. Maybe maybe this light is just. A, <laughs> I'm like a fly. <laughs> I love it. I love the light. But when you turn the light, like at that there, that, that was okay looking at that. But you see the moment I turned the light on. And suddenly, the whole thing just came to life. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here, and I'm getting nothing but positive vibes off this. That's really weird. <laughs> it's really, really weird. Um, yeah, you've got to, you've got to feel this. Let me, let me, right. Come up to your screen, right? Come up to your screen. <laughs> let me turn that round for you. Let me get that set up, right? So as you're sitting at it, okay? I'll take care of the power. We'll just, we'll just get out of the way. Okay, right. So turn it off. Okay, so there, there, there. You have it. Right. Imagine that you're sitting at that now. Okay, that's your that's your hobby desk. Uh -huh. Okay. Let me bring it a little bit closer, just so you get the full vibe, the full effect. Okay. And then you've sat down. You've got your mug of tea, or whatever your per personal beverage is. Yeah. Okay. I'll also, make sure and mark your paint mug. Yeah. You've got us on in the background. I've done that before. And then go. <laughs> All your hobby troubles are gone. Mm. Isn't that amazing? It's nice, isn't it? Isn't that quite amazing? I've got to say, I'm not joking. There is something very, very satisfying. Yeah. About uh, I know you've had your eye on this, and I know I was about to give it to Lance. No, no, dude, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, that no. guy actually paints. So no, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking instead, 
Uh, I'm thinking instead we'll just have a fight. Mm. We'll just have a, we'll just have a royal rumble in the office over this one, <laughs> um, because there's a load of us that could actually benefit from something like this. Yeah, that is really really cool. I'm very interested to see where this kind of um, system solution goes. Mm. Right, so that's one. Yeah, okay. that's the big one. Uh, that's the big one. Yeah. But we also have a, a little one that we're giving away. So there's going to be two winners this week. Mm. Okay. So let me pop that one out of the way. Yeah. Now, I'll take this away as well. Mm-hmm. Because the little one has one of its own too. Now, what is this one called? Uh, this is the small miniatures case, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is this more about yeah. transportation or is this about hobby as well? This is about hobby. Mm -hmm. It can help there, but it is also about uh, keeping your project together. Whap. Okay. <laughs> so let's have a closer look at this one. Yeah. So this one has, it has light a light as well. Okay. So let's get that on. I wonder will this have the same effect? So um, let me just pop that in and see. Okay. So that goes on there like that. Now, I want to be careful here, Warren, so I'm going to keep this separate, just uh -huh. in case there's a slightly different amperage yeah. for the smaller light. Okay, there's not, but they, they, they are identical. Okay. Um, but I'll get this unwired here. Now, I don't want it turned on just yet, Justin. Okay? Yeah. So go ahead and plug it in, but don't turn it on yet, yep. until okay. I've had a look through the components. Yeah. So, so you have a box. You start off with your tray at the top. Okay. Um, uh, I would have my paintbrushes and... Do you know what? Maybe even keep some dice and stuff in yeah, there. It depends uh, on what say, you plan to do with this. I would say paintbrushes and paints in there, and I would have this as a small one. Yeah. Okay. So, um, paintbrushes again. Paintbrushes, glue, um, mm -hmm. for breakages and things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, that can go into either that top rung. Yeah. So, well, would so, that be your tournament repair pack? Yes. This is this is what I'm. That's thinking the first of. aid kit then. Yeah. I'm thinking it, it, you know, you'd have the bits and pieces in that mm -hmm. that you would use for your your kind of typical stuff that could go wrong. Yeah. Here I would I, have yeah, selection paints. paints. Well, that sh I think is is that the magnetized one or is nope. that the other nope. one? No, nope. that's I, the paint. I, I should say I think this particular miniatures case that we've got yeah. has been upgraded to be a painting station as well. I, so okay. it comes with all the bells and whistles. It's got the lights. This there. is where it gets interesting. Aye, there's the then magnetized one. You have two magnetized trays. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is to glue some metal bits, some ferrous metal bits, yeah, uh, into the bottom of your bases, and they will just go clink clink into that. And yeah. it says here that uh, the two trays can hold up to thirty six miniatures on twenty five millimeter round bases yeah. each. So definitely, um, if for anybody that's playing their skirmish games like Infinity or War Machine, mm. I don't think you'd have too much problem fitting them into the. Uh, into I, think the I, I think I could fit like a, a fifty to seventy-five point warband into that. Yeah. So long as I'm not like taking colossals. Yeah. Uh, for the skirmish games, though, I think yeah. I think you yeah. I think you'd be well set uh, on that. What I would love to use this for, just because it fits the theme of it, Field yeah. Realms. I God, think it would yeah. look gorgeous inside that. Yeah, that would look nice mm. uh, with Fabled Realms. Mm. Um, even even Saga. Well, yeah, you know what I would or... use it for? The Hobbit. Hobbits. Would, you, would, you, would your Hobbits fit in that? Definitely. Yeah? Right. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Wait for it, Justin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't Wait, get all, this is, this is the closest, the don't Justin get all premature on, on me, man. Lights. Okay, so. Fingers on the big red button. So let's do the, the effect for the viewers at home first. Ready? Me. Okay. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Right. Now, turn it off. Now for the effect for me. Okay? <laughs> because uh, because really I'm the only one that matters at the end of the day. So I want I want to know. So I'm looking at this. Okay, turn it on. <laughs> that now, is Now here's a question. Because this is smaller, does it give you a tighter focus? Or do you think the bigger one with the more spread fills your vision better to keep you focused in? Hmm. I see what you mean. I think we I see what you mean. Yeah. I think the bigger one, um, because it is a bit more, it, it is a bit fills more, vision. it fills the peripheral vision a little bit more. Yes. What I say we need to do is we need to do a scientific experiment. We set Warren down for an hour in front of each one doing a bit of hobby time while one of us stands over him with a clipboard. Yeah, well, here's what I'm wondering, science. right? I'm wondering, I'm wondering if all the magic is in the light. I'm wondering if I just carry a light around with me. <laughs> and, and anytime I need to focus, 
I just turn on a daylight a, so, a, a thing in front so of me, I, and I just go. Oh. I, I know what. I know exactly <laughs> what to get one. You know the headband lamps you get. Yeah. yeah. Oh crap! I'm doing tax returns. Click. <sighs> I do want it is it's it's not as powerful an effect on this one as it is on the previous one, but it is it is a quite extraordinary the difference that when that wee light goes on mm. of how it focuses the attention um onto the project that you're working yep, on definitely yeah definitely okay so that is the oh, what do we call these again what's the two names it was the portable painting stations okay oh, yep. there's one one right, is the two. large portable painting station and the miniature close station. the legs you got it. Close the legs, pop it in. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can pop your power pack in. Yeah. Power pack in as well. It all goes away rather neatly. Yeah. Do you know I really like that as a travel case because one of the things is we all know we take our armies uh, uh, to tournaments and things like that. Oh heck, I'll never forget it. I took a I took my newly painted um, uh, Nacht Wolf. Yeah. Mm. To the to the grand tournament. Um, yeah. The flames. Tea trays. Tea trays on tea trays. I dropped the tray, oh. and all my resin minis just oh. went smash. Oh yeah. no! Now, if I had had this, <laughs> it would have helped a lot. Yeah. Um, not only um, uh, because I am clumsy, I drop minis. Everybody knows this, yeah. okay? But if I had this with my with my first aid, my mini first aid kit in it, yeah. And I, not only could I have fixed it, but when I turned that light on, I would have felt good about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Um, stay tuned at the end of the show, and we will tell you how you can enter to win. Um, somebody's going to win a big one, and somebody's going to win a little one. Yes. Right. We're going to move on to the news, but before we do that, let's tell you about some of the amazing, awesome gaming hubs here on beastofwar.com. The new Flames of War 4th edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics, and tutorials. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. Welcome back, guys. Right, time to get on with the news. Ben, mm. what is going on in the world? No. Uh, yeah, so we're kicking things off with what's happening with uh, Fantasy Flight games. Obviously, Star Wars Legion is now out for everyone to go and pick Star up. Wars? Star Wars? Oh, you don't of, say. Was it the news? What the hell? I wonder who got yes. this segment. <laughs> I wonder who got that added to the running order. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, one of the things we wanted to focus in on is um, some of the sort of peripheral stuff that they're doing. Yes. And this is they're actually providing people with the choice to pick up uh, two 3x3 battle mats that come together to form a 6x3, if you want yep. to use that. Mm -hmm. But also they get doing some bits and pieces of terrain as well. So they've come forward with some uh, extra elements that will add to your Ooh. game as well. So you picked yeah. up the core set, you've got all the troops, you've got some of the little plastic pieces that came in that. They've also added in some Ooh. extra bits and bobs as well, so you can yeah. uh, put together some really cool-looking scenes from Tatooine and the like as well, which is really cool. Uh, one of the other cool things about the, what they're doing with the terrain sets for this is it actually comes with little scenarios in the box. Ooh. So when you pick up the terrain kit, you actually get some bits and bobs to play some cool scenarios on the yeah. table. So um, sort of sabotaging moisture, farming equipment, and all that kind oh, of thing as well. that's a great touch. Yeah. Well, Isn't it? I, I like this because you've got the, the three things you use to actually set up your game. So, yep. You've got your deployment in the middle, mm -hmm. you've got your battlefield conditions in green, and mm -hmm. I believe the blue is your mission. Yeah. So being able to add that and expand that is fantastic, because it, it was the one thing I was sort of hungering more for within that core mm -hmm. box. I also wondered, does this give us a, the structure that we need now to start creating um, our own cool missions? Yes. You know, it's um, because I, I have missions in mind myself, Yeah. Um, the, so I'd like to know... What what is the best way to to structure those missions? So can't be over complete uh, complex. Mm -hmm. Has to be a single trigger. I would say because if you do like a, a chain uh, quest during a game, you've only got six rounds to do it. You will never get it done. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing as I used to have with Volsung. I would try and make my own scenarios, but I would make them too complex. So keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you, you've actually started having your own uh, games of Star Wars Legion. Like, yes, I have. Been, yeah. Have mm -hmm. you been finding it? Love it. Yeah. I love I've it. been teaching him. Yeah, yeah, it's um. I hope I've been teaching him right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry, YouTube commenters will tell you otherwise. And, and, yeah. and anybody that knows me knows I don't care. Yeah. yeah it's like, you know, if you're having awesome fun. Uh, yeah, times, I, yeah. I'm. I, I'm immediately just uh, been uh, going in and, and looking into the narrative aspects of it. So I already have 
um, a mission in mind that I'm desperate to 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 try out. Like so, White Tiger uh, and Tatooine. Well, no, what what I want to do is um, yeah, we like banter. Um, he'll tell you about uh, you. You mentioned triggers, okay? Yes. You know, I'm a big fan of um, uh, ex- using the game to 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 explore a narrative, okay? Yeah. So what I have is um, I have a, a and I'm hoping to play this out at some point, okay? Mm-hmm. Either as a a live play test of a scenario might be the way to do it that could you work. know so we mm-hmm. just um, I say look here's a scenario and we'll yeah. maybe do a live stream where we, yeah, we, we don't see do if we can... a, an actual full full-on playthrough this is us testing our scenario this is just testing community. if a scenario works and if it if it kind of breaks we can fudge it and keep going to see if we can yeah, we make it work. adjust it on yeah. the fly yeah um, I agree with that. so what I what I have is this uh, this idea of a large uh, communications tower OK, OK, we will get the editors to bring up a picture of, of what I'm talking about. OK, so if you can imagine a, a Tatooine style table, OK, yeah. with a large comm tower mm-hmm. and there's an Imperial patrol, OK, mm-hmm. a small Imperial patrol of um, maybe an ATST and a couple of speeder bikes. Okay? Yeah, that works. Um, and they're just on their, their standard patrol and they've heard a go and check out quadrant, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's there's some strange um, acti- radioactivity. Okay, mm-hmm. they they want they wander they zoom into this village um, um, on, on Tatooine or on Jeddah, in, in, desert world. Okay, in interesting little sign thing in the original movie. You know the speeder going into Tatooine. Mm-hmm. Do you know how they did the hover effect? They put Vaseline on the camera to to blur underneath the uh, speeder. Serious? Seriously. Uh, huh? Well, if you bring your Vaseline in, uh, <laughs> <you'll>, <laughs> I mean, you'll use that during the during the mission, okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> we um they they wander and they see this big tall white tower, okay? Yes. And it's it, it's actually it, it's a little the rebels are there, okay? And the rebels um are using the tower to to block communications. So the the speeder bikes and the ATST have arrived and they find themselves that they are out of comm link and they're completely outnumbered, okay? Mm. So one ATST, two speeder bikes, but there's all of the rebels is there. Okay. Yeah. The mission is they have to try and get to the tower. Okay. So it's a run the gauntlet kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, where as they're going, all of these um, uh, rebels are coming out and shooting the out of these guys. That's, that's right? an interesting reversal because usually it's the rebels of the outnumbered. Well, this, world. yes, this is, this is something that has been playing on my mind recently. Um, during this, um, Star Wars binge that I've been having, mm. okay? Um, uh, I, it, it's gradually been occur, occurring to me that the line is more and more blurred between who actually is the bad guy, okay? Mm. Uh, uh, between the uh, rebels and the... Uh, and I, the I think the guy so. shooting lightning out of his hands, screaming unlimited power <laughs> might be a bad guy. Well... <laughs> I Possibly. Like, I like the idea of of doing uh, of doing the role reversals uh, mm. on this. So these guys are completely outnumbered. Mm. All they can do is try and get to the transmitter tower. Okay, mm. if they get to the transmitter tower, we then will have a little table that they can roll off. Mm. Now I might have a condition in it. You know the way in Star Wars Legion, there's different uh, there's different dice with different odds for getting cool stuff. Yeah. yeah so the the black, the white, the red. Yeah. So what I might do is I might build in a condition that if they get there, if they get there super quick, or if they get there super late, it, depending on when they get there mm-hmm. or the number of them that get there, it changes the color of dice that they roll. Mm. Okay, and then when they roll the dice, it, it goes on a, a little table. So if they get a critical, yeah, okay, they get the the best result. If they get a non-critical, they get a mm. good result, and if they get a um a, a like a blank. They then get a a fairly standard yeah. result. So, is this for the entire dice pool or per dice? So, for uh, each dice that rolls a critical, they get something great. For each dice that rolls a no, standard, no, they no. Get so, good. if they, if well, what we would have is, oh, if all three of them make it, yeah, they roll. What's the best dice? Is the red one, isn't it, or is it yeah. the black? Red is the best. Black is the middle. White is the worst. I think. Okay, so if all three of them make it, they roll a red dice. Yeah. If two of them make it. They roll a black dice. If yeah. one of them makes it, they roll a white dice. Right. Okay, which means that um, the it's less likely for for cool stuff to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. The best, the worst result is, um, or they they manage to 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 get to break down the communications and reinforcements come in, mm-hmm. and a lambda shuttle 
lands yeah. um, and maybe at a predefined point on the table yeah. and it offloads a bunch of storm <laughs> yeah. Okay, Just to turn the tables. So the middle result, though, is a lambda lands at a place of your choice, okay, and offloads a bunch of stormtroopers, mm. uh, meaning that your your stormtroopers are are more likely to get into the action a lot quicker, mm. and maybe change the the loadout of the stormtroopers to include more heavy weapons or something mm. like well, that. Possibly. Don't forget, each squad can only have one heavy weapon. Yeah. So, uh, it's something I'm considering here is to actually give you a fighting chance to actually get across the table to where you need to go within the six turns. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, if it's on a six-foot table, mm -hmm. your movement is that three times per turn. Mm -hmm. So you have a fair distance to go. You might just get there at the end of it. So you need to work okay. that out. We, we need to test it. And that's why I'm thinking of doing yeah. the live streams. Sounds like and using, a plan. Using live streams to explore um, scenarios uh, together and with the community mm -hmm. so that we can then give these scenarios out yeah, to no. to because i'm hoping other people will join in on this legion thing with me because mm, i'm yeah. just having such a blast yeah. with it one cool thing to possibly do is uh so the rebels aren't already deployed and you're not having to fight through them mm -hmm. have them deploy say two units per turn onto mm -hmm. the table from say buildings and stuff yeah and maybe have it that your atsd can blow up a building a turn to try and like Stop the rebels to see if we can stop the deployment yeah, or at least reduce like tunnels, the deployment areas. Right, and imagine stuff. there's tunnels, yeah, which the there would be. You could yeah. blow up the building and then uh -huh. the exit from the tunnel is ruined, and now the rebels have to come up further away from you, yeah, and then you have more chance to get through. Also, for the rebels loadout themselves, I would say first turn regular squad with no upgrades, second turn a squad with uh, one type of heavy weapons, yeah. Uh, fourth turn uh, squad with proper heavy weapons that could take out an ATST. Yeah. Just as the alarm within the rebel base starts to cycle up, and they yeah. know more about what they need to get out there. If you roll the top result, though, mm. how's that? No, <laughs> Lambda craft arrives yeah. anywhere you want and offloads the five hundred first. Ah, and Vader. Possibly. That's cool. Okay, and and we give Vader um, a, a force move. Mm. to allow him to do a big force jump. I'm not talking about Vader from no. New Hope. I'm talking about Vader from the end of Rogue One. That's the Vader that's yeah. going to gonna walk off this Lambda craft, and he's going to utterly kick Best moment ass. in all of Rogue One. Oh, so he, What's he the is, whole movie for that moment? Mm. He has just finished his stay at his summer home when he's yes. fully healed. Uh, the, the, <laughs> this is Vader out of the back of the tank, okay? Yeah. They've, they've scraped all the dead skin off him. He's feeling... Fresh and fruity, and he is going for it. Like I mean, I, I want, I want to, I want to give Vader uh, uh, the ability to do a couple of force moves because I really want the rebels to feel the full force of bad assery. Uh, you want um, them you, to feel the force? Oh, uh, to feel the full force, Justin, the Mate, full force. Yeah. yeah. You need to look at. I, I think there's a moment in one of the Star Wars comics mm -hmm. where Darth Vader gets surrounded by rebel troops. Yeah. On his own. In the middle of uh, uh, of a desert planet, I think. Uh, He's just standing of course, there, yeah. battered armor. Uh -huh. uh, I think one eye is peering through, holding his lightsaber, and they're telling him to surrender. He just says, "All I see are dead men." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so these scenarios, right? You and Jerry are gonna are gonna be exploring all of the kind of tournament -y kind of scenarios okay yeah, yeah as as new units come out we're going to see about getting them painted up and put in that's we're also looking even now at our next expansions but i'll talk about that for my hobby time and backstage that that is what i'm you know i'm yeah. giving you and jerry the absolute you carte blanche you guys yeah. go and explore all the official stuff all you want okay yeah. I want to tell stories i'm in okay? with you there so if you i need your help yeah. and, I, and i need you guys to get stuck in as well on these live streams yeah. because I just want to tell stories, and if we can make the scenarios work, we'll chuck them out, and then you guys can yeah. can try playing them as well. But now that, now the, that I have the mechanics down, I think probably you see where head, I'm going I should about, be able not, to actually help you build what you need. Yeah, it's not necessarily about a balanced fight, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because at the start, it's asymmetric, yes. okay? Um, uh, and at the end, I want it to be asymmetric in the other way, yeah. provided Vader gets in. If Vader gets in, mm. um, I, you know, I, it, it might be a point smith smash by this because of the way I'm planning to upgrade Vader, I want the rebels to, I want it, to, I want Vader to feel like Vader should feel. Vader is the ultimate badass. Yeah. it's like Luke 
it, you know, look, Luke in the, in the Last Jedi. Okay. Yeah. It, in reality, in the Star Wars universe, Luke probably could have faced down all of that, the that all yeah. of those attacks on his own. Yeah. You know, he could have force farted them out of the place. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, that's how powerful um, a, a, a Jedi Grandmaster of Luke, like Luke, is the most yeah. powerful of all of the Jedi that ever there were. Yeah. Um, he was, but Vader. Was is kind of like the 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 equal opposite of that, and I, I I want to see Vader, I want him on that tabletop in that moment yeah. to be completely like a, just it yeah. just kicks ass because that that's the story I have in my mind. This is a, another reason I like the the cycling up of the rebels with them getting more and more reinforcements as, yes. as the turns roll on, because then it, it's going to look as if oh crap oh crap oh crap Vader's here oh shit yeah. <laughs> So seeing these little terrain packs coming out yeah. um, is, is great because we're starting to get an idea of the kind of the structure that we can use because not every game needs to be big yeah. and, and mm -hmm. brash like that. But you know, there's so many different kinds of uh, MacGuffin. Um, is, is it a MacGuffin that, that yeah, it's called? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. MacGuffin. It's, um, uh, that you can use right. in, in these games. Like the other one that is, uh, and I want to try and like, a, a lot of you guys will be like me that you were like Star Wars movie fans, okay? Mm. Um, so the things like kyber crystals, yeah. okay, you ne you you kind of got the the impression. Oh, you, I see you constructed constructed your new your own lightsaber, <sighs> but you never really got to know just how important how, yeah. a lightsaber was. Yeah. Okay, so there's uh, 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 there's an underlying um, resource within the Star Wars universe called the kyber crystal. Yeah, yes. Okay, and the, the the kyber crystal is used. It powered like the the laser, the super lasers on the Death Star were yeah. powered from. Yeah. Kyber crystals, um, the, all of the Jedi lightsabers. The Jedi's yeah. as young Padawans would go to a planet to hunt and find their Kyber crystal. Yeah. The, so there was a, a ritualistic thing that we never got to see. The Sith, Kotor, you see it in Kotor. Yeah, the Sith actually uh, ma manufacture their own synthetic. Yeah, Kyber that's crystal. why theirs is red. Yeah, that's why theirs is red. There's, there's a at couple least of, that's one explanation. Yeah, there's then. a couple of different explanations. The other is that they've found some way to make the to Kyber crystals them. bleed. Mm. Yeah. Except the blood of the Kyber yeah, yeah, yeah. crystal. So, and uh, that's what corrupts them. Um, uh, Kylo Ren's Kyber crystal has a has a flaw, has a crack in it, mm. which causes all that spitting and sparking. Yeah. Um. It. it you know. It, it's. So one of the things I want to uh, want to play around with is is the idea because we used to do it on the Necron tables. Do you remember? You get all the little green yes, crystals yeah, and things. Yeah, I remember those. But I want to see what kyber, what kyber crystals, what crystals mm. we have lying around the studio that we yeah. could that you could set out and you could you could be uh, kind of harvesting kyber crystals. There's all sorts of interesting maybe, stuff. Maybe reach out to our friends at uh, Anarchy Models because they do some really nice ones. Yeah, yeah. There's loads. There's loads. Anyway, yeah. Thanks for bringing up Star Wars, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You and know, now we're you guys, to our, our scheduled program. You guys get the Hobbit. Shit out of me all the time. <laughs> it's not often I get to I get to, to go on and on about uh, about yeah, something. Not like often. This, yeah. So well, okay. I always go on and on, but but never not often about my my own hobby. And Star Wars has, has definitely yeah. become a center of a, of a hobby for me. Yeah. So I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let's talk about games workshop yeah, yeah. and Adapticon. <laughs> yeah. I was I was gonna ask Ben what was next and say please not the Hobbit. No, 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 no. It's Games Workshop at Adapticon, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, so this is the announcements that came out of Adepticon uh, this week uh, earlier, and it's all sort of looking towards, well, both 40k and Age of Sigmar. Yeah. The main things that came out for uh, Warhammer 40,000 was there was uh, a new sort of preview, a little bit of a reveal, a little bit of a tease for the Imperial Knights, mm -hmm. and they're getting themselves a new model and i think the sort of um ethos behind it seems to be there can never be too many guns so there's a little bit of a teaser trailer for that so it's Lovely. an imperial knight covered in guns which is pretty cool yeah. they're also going to be expanding upon that a little bit more with some more imperial knights down the road so we saw the armager warglaves as part of forge bane but yes. they're also going to be adding a few more bits and pieces in there in terms of characters and stuff see as well, if some of these will well. play justin go up to that top one and see if you can skip it to to see the imperial knight is it is the imperial knight in the video just uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it is in there. It's sort of yeah. in there, sort of as little snippets towards the end of it. I think, okay, so, so go, skip through. Yeah, keep going. Let's I kind of like this way. Oh, here we go. Off with... oh. Oh, 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 my God. It does have a lot of guns, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, man, I heard you like guns. Oh, wow. Yes. Little armpit guns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I believe you now, Ben. Yeah. I believe you now. 
Uh, as well as that, there's also going to be the Imperial Knights Codex. It's coming out very soon, so the Imperials are going to get that in their in their sort of wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. As well as that, something for Sam. The Harlequins are going to be getting themselves a proper yeah. hardback codex, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then finally for the Imperials as well, we've also got the Death Watch Codex. So if you like those kind of things, you've got that. Uh, coming up for you. Oh, nice. Also, on the front for uh, Warmer 40,000, there's also going to be a sort of oh. um, a new app that comes out for you to build your armies on. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember the, ne the exact name of it. It is in there somewhere. But uh, it's called the Combat Roster. That's the name of it. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, you can download the Combat Roster, give that a go, and it will help you build your armies and stuff for match play. The other massive news as well yeah. that it yeah. excited a lot of people was that there's going to be uh, Plastic Sisters of Battle uh -huh. finally in 2019. So not this year, but next year. Yeah. So if you've got the, the patience to last uh, uh, a whole year, you'll be able to get your Plastic Sisters of Battle in 2019, which is very cool. That is game. interesting because that is almost exactly 10 years uh, from the point when we found out that there were already Plastic Sisters of Battle. Mm. Um, uh, well, there you go, yeah. Well, whenever uh, well, there was some X games workshop studio guys came out and we had heard about in two i think it was 2009 2010 mm. when we heard yeah the, there's plastic sisters sisters of battle sitting there you can be guaranteed it's not those no yeah no. you can be guaranteed it's not yeah those. but so that, they have that been dumped and make sisters of battle people hopeful that they might get the codex brought back out of white dwarf mm. oh they will uh, well it does, it, it does yeah. still exist as part of the the ones that you can get in the um the little the the booklets they came out with in the, when the game launched, you could still get your hands on Sisters of Battle's rules and stuff. So yeah, they do there exist is, out but there. There is absolutely edition, going to be a Sisters of Battle codex now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. 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 There, there were there were a few people fielding them at the uh, 40k Prague Open. Actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, one of the other big things for for. 40k as well and specifically around the sister battle is they're actually going to be charting the progress of how they bring them to life so one of the that's a massive thing for games workshop to be doing to be showing off a little bit more about the concept stage and all that kind of thing as well mm -hmm. so we'll see that that probably on the warmer community website so it'd be very cool to keep an eye on that uh, over the next coming months yeah that, that's going to be together. fascinating absolutely yeah. fascinating yeah in, in other news of, oh, yeah so yeah, go on go on the, yeah go on the age of sigma yeah yeah, we have the new faction for these guys. So this is a new order faction, and they are called the Ideneth Deepkin. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. these are a race of elves, uh, elves in the world of uh, Age of Sigmar that have dwelt down in the depths of the seas, and now they're coming to reclaim the land and take you down into the depths and kill you. These so are yes, these colorful are colorful cool dark people. elves. Yes. Yeah. I love so, yeah. these. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of a mix between uh, high elves and dark elves going yeah. on here, which is pretty cool. Oh, and they have turtle of metal battle. Oh <laughs> God, it's beautiful. They're, they're kind of a cross between from the old boy and fantasy, the dark elf corsairs and the high elf sea guard. Oh, uh, I absolutely love them. Holy this smokes. might be the army to get me into Age of Sigma. You're you're not the only one saying that. I I I can guarantee you that there yeah. are legions. Looking at these, going, oh my god, look at that. The water effect sculpted in there is What a beautiful, beautiful sculpt. With the little fishes coming out. Of yeah. Oh, uh, wow. I absolutely love this. Is that it's a something... hammerhead shark? No, mm -hmm. it's a, like a manta ray or something. It, well, yeah. not quite as big as a manta, but it's fresh, it's original, it's a cool take, and uh, it draws on some things that were already in play. I absolutely oh, love it. It's got to... the, the over-the-top feel. Message to the design studio. What? We are not worthy. Yeah. <laughs> what that is, as a piece of design goes, yeah. that is flipping fabulous. Yeah. What a beautiful, beautiful army. Yeah. I love it. And kudos to whoever come up with the, the turtle metal battle, guys. It's just <laughs> absolutely But awesome. I know what you're waiting for. What? I know exactly what you're waiting for. A shark or no, <laughs> what? No. A giant! Oh, enemy giant. No, crab! no, 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 Do not put a giant enemy crab into that. Uh, the turtles. That could work. The, the turtles. Uh, uh, it, where you can, I can see that going is is uh, like more of the manta ray kind of mm, stuff. Yeah. But but I, I don't oh, know. Oh, oh, yes. High elves on si single flying mantas around. It would be Almost like, like screen screamers. Yeah. Screamers. Yeah. 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 Oh, like the, the old 40k nice. dark elves with the, the twin wing blade thing just surfing that, on top they, of a mega. They exist now. Oh, no, no, but similar yeah, to yeah. that design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, have it as a cavalry uh, option. Oh, yes, Ben? 
it, when you have a look through the the teaser video, if anybody gets a chance to have a peek, mm. there are actually some snippets of what their cavalry is going to look like, and they appear to be sort of um, riding around on almost under under sea sea dragons, which is kind of awesome. So it's kind of looking towards like want... the the um, the dragon knights uh, of Calidors, I think they were yeah. from Hyles, mm. so that's pretty cool. So yeah, nice. I want oh. this faction. Round of applause for that one. That that yeah. what a release. Yeah, what a uh, release. Uh, yeah, just to finish off with what the news was from Adepticon as well, uh, there's two main things. Uh, one of them is that there's going to be what's called the Warhammer Legends collection. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a little bit like their made-to-order scheme that they do already, but what's going to happen is what's, they will take old models from uh, the old world of Warhammer Fantasy, especially for now, and then they will give them updated rules for Age of Sigmar that you can use in not not match play, but in any kind of other custom games you want to play. Mm -hmm. So if there's any core cool models that come out in their metals that they want to redo as a made to order scheme, you can pick those up and they'll have rules for you to play on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. The other thing they're also going to be doing is that um, Games Workshop are going to be focusing on creating some event-exclusive miniatures in the future. Mm -hmm. So they gave a little bit of a preview of one uh, at Adepticon, but this means that when you go to the likes of Salute or UK Games Expo, Warhammer Fest, and these kind of shows like that, you'll be able to pick up event-exclusive miniatures in the future, which sounds pretty awesome. And it's something that everyone else is doing, so it's good that they're jumping on the bandwagon with that as well. They sure. used to do that, didn't they, for their own events? Went, well, for game stays yeah. and stuff. That yeah, it was that, usually yeah. game stay and mostly through Forge World. Mm. Um, but now this is actual Games Workshop doing it as well. So Yeah, yeah. very nice, very nice. In uh, another interesting piece of uh, Age of Sigmar news... This one has me kind um, of... Uh, Play Fusion, the makers mm. of Lightseekers, mm. which I've got to say, I have been having a blast playing lights uh, light seekers over my lunch breaks here uh, in the studio mm -hmm. um colin one of the team yeah. in the editing suite um uh, dove in head first oh me and me and yeah. colin we, we we do our lunch times. coco absolutely loves it, it it's oh. funny every so often you'll just pop up and go hey want to play some light seekers yeah it, it's <laughs> we are, we, i love it so light seekers is, is a card game you'll have seen us uh, featuring it uh, recently yeah and it is it's one of the best card battle games um uh, i have i have played i am really enjoying i'm enjoying it more than magic the gathering i've got to say see i i find it accessible whereas i find magic the gathering a little bit impenetrable just for the the number of cards that you're worried about because yeah. it's a new game the accessibility is there for it i'm probably a bit too invested in magic i i'm it, the reason i'm liking it is i'm loving the structure of it mm. um mm. As, a, as a game you've got to watch a couple of playthroughs of, of this yeah. because there is a really nice structure to it and it's it's a really accessible game yes. in that sense so we even, have we even, have plenty of let's plays uh but if you want to check them yeah. out let's yeah. let's get them listed. The game. we'll get them listed in the show notes because mm. Um, uh, as card games go, I um, highly recommend it, and I've been yeah, really, really enjoying it. And there's lots of variety in the different faction decks and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. The, the play styles are, are really interesting. But the, Loving each it. Each deck has a, a key figurehead, a hero, which gives you that, that sense of character that mm -hmm. you sometimes miss from other collectible card games. Yeah. But in the news um, uh, the, out of Adepticon, Play Fusion have signed up to do a collectible card game for Age of Sigmar, yep. which is also using their um, augmented reality technology, oh. because these guys have come out of the video game background. Yes. Yep. So um, all, all, on Lightseekers, you, you can, uh, I believe your cards can, uh, well, can the, unlock uh, augmented aspects. And... The, the way it works is, so mm -hmm. the, the guys at Lightseekers for the Lightseekers game have an app. Yeah. You download this app, and let's say you're in the store with the Lightseekers app, and you're thinking of picking up one of the starter decks. Mm -hmm. You hold your, your app on your phone up to the box, it scans the box, mm -hmm. and then in an augmented reality format, the, the box contents pop out at you and you're fit to scan through, see exactly what's in your starter set mm -hmm. before you buy it. Then the cards themselves have like little pips around the side that you can scan mm -hmm. and have a digital version for not just a, the, the actual collection, but they have an augmented reality game itself, which runs in tandem, which is also a video game, which ties into these guys, Grab on ice, mm -hmm. which are their action figures, which actually tie into an iPad, and I can use this guy as a controller on my iPad to play the video game version. Does this mean we could get in... Age of Sigmar action figures? Because I'm okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> what it does mean know. is, um, uh, I, 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 what they have is the on the Age of Sigmar uh, collectible card game. Mm. I believe that there is they are looking at um, the augmented reality aspect. So. 
you, you could find Age of Sigmar characters popping up on the cards and stuff oh, like that. But there's, brilliant. There's some seriously, seriously yeah, awesome technology going with it. But what I want to say, and it's the most important thing, yeah. okay, all this augmented reality stuff is, is fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. These guys are very, very capable game designers. Oh, definitely. That, that light seekers, like we don't bother myself and Coco with any of the augmented reality aspect no, of it. Can I all. scan all your cards then? It plays beautifully as it's a card a game. It's a smooth, simple, fun card game. It uh, is very good. That's uh, what that's what I've got high hopes for here. Let me put it this way. I played about, say, three to four games of this on camera, right? Mm -hmm. By the end of those three to four games, I sat down with the, the game designer, the person who actually created the mechanics and stuff for yeah. it, and was fit to play on a level footing with him. Really? Yeah, I felt like I had an, a, a good chance of winning all the way through. I felt like it was a nice tight fight i didn't feel like it was holding back uh -huh. and it came right down to the wire and it was such an edge moment to actually just tip it for victory one way or the other oh, very so nice. that is the sign of a very good game that yeah. pick up and play and being able to play on a level footing against someone who is so experienced at it okay mm. yeah so stay tuned for that very exciting news there and a, a very a very very good company to pick that one up yeah i've got high hopes for that one mm. uh next up other big news this week yep um, Street Fighter meets Angry yes, Joe. Yes. Who the hell was expecting that? No, I I've been watching Angry Joe's videos for years now. Yeah. I absolutely love his stuff. And then this came out, and I am really excited to see where he goes with this. And it looks really promising. Yeah. yeah. So Ben, what can you tell us about it? Yeah. So uh, Angry Joe, or Joe Vargas is his name, uh, yeah, is yeah. going to be taking Street Fighter the miniatures game to Kickstarter in I think it's April. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to be working with Jasco Games on this, who have done some stuff with video game properties in the past. Yeah. And his whole premise behind this is that he wants to make the best Street Fighter's miniatures game for the tabletop, which mm -hmm. is why he's taking it to Kickstarter in the first place, rather than going to retail or anything like that. Yeah. It'll come with some really nice bespoke pre-painted miniatures that are pretty big when you look at some of the images mm -hmm. and stuff for them and the renders and things. And it's all about playing as your classic Street Fighter characters on the tabletop, and they each come with their own cool deck of cards, which has all their moves and stuff in them that you'll sort of uh, ape all the sort of things they could do in the di digital realm. Yeah. He's got plans for everything to do with the core game, and he's got a whole bunch of characters sorted out for that, but he's also reaching back into all the past as well to look at all the different characters there. So interesting, uh, an interesting concept overall, really, for this one. Um, the whole idea of kind of like fighting games on the tabletop is kind of a pretty awesome thing indeed and we've seen it done with other card games and stuff as well but it'd be really nice to see how it's done in this sort of format which um, sort of takes it beyond just it being one versus one because he's got ideas in there for multiplayer gaming and team gaming and all kind of things as well so you can do a little bit of tag team matching as well which is awesome um, the other thing as well that he wanted to point out and it comes up in his video is that he's working with Jasco Games to do this Kickstarter but hopefully if things go well he'll be able to do things like Dragon Ball Z as well which would be Ooh, pretty awesome yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah sounds very interesting indeed the, um, the campaign seems to have gone a lot of support on uh, youtube in the comments and such and angry joe is a massive youtuber and he's got a huge range of followers as well yeah. so it'd be nice mm -hmm. to see them coming to the tabletop world as well okay. now, so, yeah. there, there's one thing i have to do this is something i did when i was a kid and i was still playing the game mm -hmm. eternal dibs on rao eternal dibs <laughs> on rao that's right i'm gonna be honda <laughs> <laughs> Dalsim, love it. Dalsim. I, I, I just uh, street yeah. fight. Come on, yeah. that just takes us all back, yeah. really. And it's great to see Angry Joe behind this because you know he's got the knowledge and the passion for this yeah. stuff. Oh, clearly he has. If you haven't seen the yeah. video, it, it is well worth a watch. The man is taking a gamble, but I, do you know what? I think he's pitching the game about it's, right. It's a I think see if I P to go with. Oh, I'm going to say. Well, it needs to be pre-painted. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, I don't think it's a hobby product. No. It is a gaming product. Yep. I love the fact that every character comes with its own deck, so you're going to get a totally themed combat style to mm. that character. I, I have really high hopes for this, and uh, and I also think he's pitching it right that it's going to be a Kickstarter product. Yeah. There are these days now, Kickstarter has become an entire purchasing ecosystem in its own yep. right, okay? There are games that just are not suited to retail, yeah. and uh, I believe still want them. I, I believe that this Batman, some games like that, are are, are games now that that just the the uh, Kickstarter is the ecosystem that these kind of games can uh, can come to life on. Uh, if he does manage to expand the license, mm -hmm. and they have some sort of uh, oh a crossover, yes, uh, effect. We could be seeing. I think he mentioned Mortal Kombat as one of the ones he was thinking yes, about as well. Sadly. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. We could be seeing Raiden from Mortal Kombat fighting Goku from Dragon Ball Z. I know. 
Oh, it'd be nuts. with E Honda in the corner wondering what's happening. It'd be nuts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you remember the old mashup games that Capcom used to do? Yeah. Where it was Street Fighter versus this, that, and the uh, other? Capcom versus Marvel. Those. Yeah. Yeah, I used Marvel to love playing Cap those. I, uh, do you know, it takes me totally back to my teenage years, bashing on buttons down in the leisure center on Dude. the arcade machine. I was like, oh, yeah, I, wasn't, my thumbs. I wasn't allowed these, to play these them. These things used to be so popular. No, no, I wasn't allowed to play fighting games. So I would sneak home my friends' ones. Yeah, my, it was. Um, oh, it, it's yeah. a really interesting one. So um, we, we'll try and reach out to Angry Joe and see if we can uh, get him on yeah. to, to get a chat with him about it and see what uh, he see what he thinks. Yeah. And an important part about this is that when you watch the video, you see a lot of. Obviously, we talked about his passion for this, and he's really, really got into a lot of detail of playtesting this a lot. Um, so a lot of people have been saying that, hey, he's the guy from YouTube. Maybe he doesn't know a lot about board gaming and all that kind of thing. But he seems to have done a lot of research into the background, and he's really, really playtested this through. <laughs> there are also going to be, and it, it's, this is very important for Kickstarter projects now, I think, gameplay videos from the off on his Kickstarter page. Yeah. So when it launches, you'll be able to see how it plays and see how it, you know see whether or not it fits with what you want to, want to see on the tabletop. Well, so, he, he's yeah. been working on this for two years, I think. Three yeah. years. Yeah, two, two or three years, years yeah. I think he's been working on it. Well, it's, so it's, um... it's doing the one thing every good Kickstarter should do. Right now, I want to get it and I want to play it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I can't, factor. I can't wait to see the minis mm. uh, because they are big. They're, they're about this yeah. size. He said they're oh, about nice. the size of uh, we uh, action Amiibo. figures. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I'm just really, really curious to see um, how they, uh, how they turn yeah. out. You Hopefully, know, we um, get some real nice levels of detail on there and a nice prepaint to yeah. it. But well, we, 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 we'll wait and see. Mm. Um, next up is a very interesting game. Okay, mm. about cryptozoologists, yeah. of which I am a mighty cryptozoologist. Strap in, strap in, <laughs> red alert, red alert. Ben, new board game from Osprey, can you, what can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this is a game uh, by Osprey that's coming out in September 2018. Uh, it's called Cryptids, and the whole premise behind it is it's a little bit of a deduction, sort of social mystery game, and you're all playing as cryptozoologists who are trying to work out the uh, the the sort of background behind this strange creature. Mm -hmm. Now, the big thing is there's only one of you that can really claim all the glory. And so one of the big things behind the game is that, that you're trying to me. work out all this uh, interesting... No, I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. I don't Excuse me, I think you'll, you'll find I'm impeccably I, scientific. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Ben, but, right. but everybody needs to know... Yeah. That would be me. No, it would be me. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. But yeah, sorry. You're, so you're all trying to work out all this information about the beast and be the person that comes up with all the glory and can publish a scientific paper. But all the while, you're sowing misinformation to all the other people at the table. So it's all about oh, trying to yes. get other people to go off on the wrong track while you have the main uh, big deal to share with everyone at the very end of the, of the of the game. The big thing about it as well is that there's also going to be loads of replayability replay built into this. So there's going to be a massive deck of cards that will help you with the kind of um, misinformation and trying to learn a bit more about the beast. There's also going to be a modular board as well that's set up as well. So every time you come back down to play this, it'll be a little bit different. They're trying to work on also a digital component for this which isn't going to be uh, necessary when you actually start to play the game so you don't have to worry about it on that sense but it will also add more replay value to the game further down the road because it will sort of automatically generate a lot of stuff for you as well mm. so yeah that's what we know so far hopefully we'll see some gameplay videos in the, the you know the next couple of months and stuff but yep yeah, september 2018 this year so probably see this releasing at essen as well which would be pretty cool so, yeah, yeah, i can't wait to play this Me too. i cannot wait to play that, this yeah my favorite thing about this is that it seems to take into account both of my favorite aspects of cryptozoology first the cool monsters mm -hmm. and second the cool <laughs> hoaxes yes yeah yeah yes. so one one of you could also be that dentist who floated out uh, <laughs> something on a pontoon and then took a picture and made the most famous nessie picture ever mm -hmm. I, I love it i i i think this game is going to be so much fun i think it's mm. going to be such a laugh you know mm. that that is that is a game for uh, for your, your your shots of whiskey yeah. with your your friends around and just exploring a field that you know we all love it might oh, be yeah. bollocks but man we love it <laughs> yeah it's just great I'm yeah. playing a cryptozoologist in that lap I'm going to in two weeks nice <sighs> tell you I watched an amazing um, uh, Bigfoot documentary ah. recently. <laughs> And then we've got another uh, game, which is another absolute favourite of mine, which is now taking on a, a legacy spill, and it's a, a, a legacy aspect. And this is Ultimate Werewolf Legacy. Now, I've got to say, right, Ben, when we were looking, when I was looking at this, I was thinking to myself, 
how do you legacy a, a, a werewolf game? And then I, and then it occurred to me, I had a moment. I went, bing! I know exactly how you legacy something like this, okay? Uh -huh. A legacy means that it's something that sticks with you through the rest <laughs> of the game, yeah? yeah? So, you become a werewolf, yeah. okay? And then when you change back, not all of you change back. Uh -huh. So the legacy aspect is you've got big hairy feet. <laughs> and then you do that, or you might have a big hairy ass. <laughs> Or big hairy nuts, or big hairy hands. You, or you might retain the the, the, so, the mouth of a werewolf, Justin. So World of Darkness gangrel rules. Then. <laughs> okay. Exactly. No. Exactly. No. Uh, but uh, but I get to choose. No, you see this, Abra? I don't believe you. Okay. Don't all right. Me. No, it's not like that. Ben, do we know how they legacified? Um, if that's even such a word, uh, it is not. werewolf. Okay, so this is by Bezier Games, who have done all of this awesome uh, Ultimate Werewolf stuff you've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. But the, as you say, there is a legacy aspect to this, and it's actually been done by the father of all, Rob Davio, who's done all the likes of um, Pandemic and Seafall. And the whole premise behind this game is that you start off playing pretty much your standard games of Werewolf. Although added into the mix of these, you're going to have all kinds of uh, different sort of um, threads of plot. There's going to be ploys, there's going to be hidden agendas and things for you to work towards. However, at the end of your games of, of Werewolf, you'll start to write down the results of it. So who came out on top? Did the werewolves come out on top? Did the hunters? Did the the innocents manage to escape the werewolves? And this will go down into a little bit of a diary that's included with the game. And this diary will, will then start to tell the narrative of your village out there in the middle of nowhere and who comes out on top at the very end of the story, be it the werewolves or the innocents and the villagers and stuff like that. So it. it's mm. sounding pretty cool. I like the idea of a sort of long-running story that develops over the different games, and it means that every time you come back to it, your family in the in the in the in Ultimate Werewolves Legacy is going to have different um, sort of um, sort of things to strive towards in the game. So maybe in one game you want to try and be the ones that come out on top. Maybe in the next one you want the werewolves to win because that's sort of how the ploys and plots are working out together. So it sounds very cool indeed. Um, they have also said that you can play through this multiple times because there are multiple endings to the game which is pretty awesome. You wanted to buy a new diary every time you do that but other than that it sounds very cool indeed. Mm. So. I'm a little disappointed they didn't explore my hairy feet idea. But, <laughs> well know. there is going to be a limited edition version of the game that comes in <laughs> yeah. with tiny shoes you can with wear. Slippers. <laughs> I, I wish this game had been around while I was in Japan because I used to use werewolves to teach English. Yeah. Uh, on my Saturday classes, I would just, at the end of the class, I'd play werewolf with them all. Uh -huh. And it would be a great way to get them discussing. This would have been even better because I could have had them putting in diary entries and working yeah. out. And working out Do you know how many copies of the game you'd have to pick up to get that many diaries? Well, it, it, I could give... Keep diaries for each of them. Well, one, one, of the, one, of the, one of the slight drawbacks of all of this yeah. is that we only ever play Ultimate Werewolf in the pub. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the legacy aspect because I'm not sure any of us would A, remember to write in the diary, <laughs> well, no, or B, yeah. work out what the hell's going on the next time we come to the Dear pub. And, diary. <laughs> no, you, I love you. You would have to have a, a DGM. A DG, a drunk games master? No, designated games oh, master. Oh, designated games master. <laughs> the one person who's not allowed to drink to track your progress. <laughs> right. Um, uh, on the topic of weird and mm -hmm. wonderful, um, uh, there's uh, uh, well, one of our favourite events in the world is coming up. It's at UK Games Expo. And one of the great things about UK Games Expo is as yeah. it is the ultimate UK convention of gaming. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it has the most amazing weird and wonderful side as well. Okay? It does. Where there's, uh, there's cosplays, there's Vikings, there's... Star Trek bridge simulators. There's all sorts of things. I don't stuff. call that all weird. I just call it wonderful. It is wonderful. But that's just me. Um, I'm going to get Justin and Az to sit down with the, the team behind UK Games Expo yeah, sure. to explore this weird and wonderful. Hi, I'm Richard. And I'm Tony. And we're from UK Games Expo. And you're watching The Weekender on BeastsOfWar.com. Hello everyone, once again we're back talking about the UK Games Expo and today we're getting a bit weird and wonderful. We're getting into the kind of stuff that's a little less mainstream, but probably some of the most entertaining things that actually happen at the event. This oh, is yeah. one of my favourite parts of the event, just <laughs> in this this one segment. Well, I want you to start off, because last year, if you haven't seen it already in Beast of War... Yeah. Um, it is in backstage. It is in backstage, so you, you can go and check it out, you can get your 7 day free pass if you'd like to go and see it. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. put a link below so you can check it out as well. You guys engaged in the Starship Simulator. Yes, myself, Warren, and Don, I believe it yeah. was. Uh, let's see, I was weapons officer, Don was navigation, Warren somehow ended up the captain, and we didn't explode. 
That's that's <laughs> really impressive. It's better than you, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how did you get on when you played? I think we exploded. <laughs> <laughs> so that's back this yeah, year. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the Starship Simulator has been massively popular. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're very keen on it, and the, and the guys that run that do a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And um, in the past, we've we've helped support that. Um, by just effectively giving them a bit of finance to, to yeah. upgrade their kit because mm -hmm. mm. we just thought it was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes I mean, you just want to do cool stuff. Yeah, it is fully custom built what they have. So their their control consoles mm -hmm. and everything in there is one hundred percent custom built. Yeah. Amazing. You walk in when the lights are on, you go, Oh, okay. Then the lights go down, the RBG lighting comes up and your immersion levels just go through the roof. It's really good. And there's a red alert button. Yes. Yes, there's a red alert yes. button. Oh, <laughs> so good. Just so good. So that captain just kept telling me off because I kept pressing the red alert. I haven't given orders for red alert yet. <laughs> I, 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 I was kind of trigger happy with the torpedoes. Yeah. <laughs> that just makes me want a red dwarf so much. I want to go blue yes. alert, but captain, I have to change the ball. Because like <laughs> <laughs> there's something to be said for real-time events. And we've talked yes. about it with you guys before, but these moments and these things Things that you're not going to get an experience like this anywhere else even if you're playing no, you can't do this at home. yeah exactly it's it's production value that you can't really imagine also big hit from last year was your dark room yes i don't i don't know whether to call it theater or an event or audience participation performance i'm not sure what yes, I would, it's those. yeah all it's all those <laughs> well what you've got here is you've got um you know the whole ho old text adventures yeah you know you go north go west etc pick up axe can't mm -hmm. see axe yeah <laughs> that sort of thing well it's like that but with a mad Australian as the computer. <laughs> so um, John Robinson, who is a brilliant um, ad-lib com uh, comedian mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. uh, runs this where he, he's got a light thing that he shines on his head, so he's just like a head running around. <laughs> and he runs this thing where you as the audience take part in the game. Love that. And it is fully immersive, yes. massively funny really rude mm -hmm. yeah and just fantastic he does do a kids version i think that has five percent less swearing <laughs> so what like, heck instead of hell things like that <laughs> oh, oh no, about that. <laughs> no guarantees <laughs> when i when i say it's rude when he's doing the full version yes you know if, if you are delicate of nature then it's probably not the thing but it is so really basically fun. there is a, a hang up check in at the door <laughs> yes, yes it is but it is i mean I, I i to be honest we've run it i think now for three years this will be the third mm -hmm. i hadn't seen it mm -hmm. yeah. but i went to the fringe because we were looking for other acts as yeah. well and on that i got the chance to actually go and see mm -hmm. it. massively funny yeah. really great um, our volunteer teams think it's the best thing ever, and mm -hmm. they go on mass. Oh wow! And um, you know, it's a, you know almost a cult following. Mm -hmm. So if you get if you want to see something, Dark Room is fantastic. Yeah. Dark Room until you die this year, of course. Yeah, Dark Room until you die, which means he plays that until you're basically one of you drop dead. Yes. Either him or the audience. The entire, the entire audience. I'm sorry, are, are there still tickets for this? Yep. Yes, yes, yes there are. There are tickets. Going after this. <laughs> so there are tickets. Starship Simulator selling out really quickly. Yeah. Mm. So no if you want to play that, yeah. get in, get in now. Yeah. Dark Room, lots of shows for that, but still selling. So go and, and, and get yeah. that booked in. I want to jump ahead for a second because you mentioned finding John at Fringe Festival. This yes. must be something you guys are doing a little bit because you've got another new act that you find at Fringe. Yep. Is it? Are you guys got a little routine going? Where you're well, we, find... well, yes, where we go, to, we go to the. I mean, you used to go to the Fringe anyway, yeah. didn't you? Well, often, yes, because yeah, well, you're years. that sort of, you know. And I sort of try and sell it to him, but this is a. You know, a... It's work. Work. it's work. So you're going yeah. for the giggles, but John, yeah. you're, going, you're going for the... You're going for well, the he tumor, used to go by himself with his missus, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, then. And he'd be like, oh, yes, but it's a very important research work. <laughs> so, so last year, I, I'm coming too. <laughs> <laughs> Which was quite a, quite a crash in the, in the double bed with him and his wife. But, you know, we got We by. found a way. <laughs> and, you, and successfully researched a new yeah. performer? Well, it's well it's several. In fact, uh, so... we got this uh, Tom Crosby. Tom Crosby, uh, Can't Polish a Nerd. I mean, he is... He, he shuffles onto stage and he looks and you think, oh, looks like a nerd. It's a, like a nerd, basically. Mm -hmm. no time. And I think this might be a bit awkward and yeah. difficult and things. And actually, he's just really good. I mean, he's a combination of sort of memory type of um, sort of magic, as yeah. it were, card tricks, you know, with, with remembering the. Mm -hmm. Doing two order, Rubik's Cubes Rubik's like this cubes at, at the same time. And yeah. then he's. Uh, then he's sort of like um, and comedy. You know, the distance, as it were, right at the end, mm -hmm. is making a picture of, some, of someone. It was Donald, sure. Donald Trump in our case, thing, wasn't it? Uh, from Rubik's Cubes. Yeah. And I won't show you the, pit, the punchline wow. on the... Uh, so you, that, he, but, he, picks, uh, he, he gets yeah. you to write names, mm -hmm. yep, picks yeah. a name out of the hat, mm -hmm. and then he makes 
the picture. Six one on he's a talking cube, on to you yeah. out of 40, 50 Rubik's yeah. cubes. Oh, that could be cool. Like a pixel picture. Wow. Yeah. There's yeah. a picture on our website on that, for that, on yeah. that event. You can and there's see a surprise. Yeah, we'll get that up. Yeah. And yeah. to be honest, that isn't the surprising bit. No. So go and see him and you'll see what the surprise is. That's fairly awesome, but wait 30 seconds afterwards and yeah. you'll really see what's awesome. Yeah. That's really got me intrigued. Just, just and he's, he's, he's been on things like TEDx, if anyone's familiar with the, the TED Talks things you see. like He's kind of an up-and-comer, but you guys have kind of picked him yeah, up yeah, earlier. Yeah, we might, and he may be a, star, a, guest, a guest performer on a few of the other live events that we yeah. do as well. So. Fantastic. We tend but to mix the other guys funny bloke, too. very skilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kevin, uh, very, very clever guy. guy. Who else did you find? Uh, Jolly Boat. Jolly Boat. Uh, Jolly Boat? Jolly Boat, which uh, Jolly portray Boat. themselves Jolly Boat. as the uh, the best comedy pirate geek rock duo, which... Uh, Relatively niche. I'm intrigued. Yeah, maybe, okay. but, I'm not sure I know attention. many. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, uh, yeah. You bought the tickets for this. Yes. And I went, well, because I didn't have any choice. <laughs> and I was sat there, and I have to say, First of all, they had a problem with their sound at the fridge, didn't yes. they? <clears throat> and I almost was like, do you want me to come and help with that? <laughs> but then they got it fixed, and I have to say, it was probably some of the funniest... Comedy pirate geek rock. Yeah. ...I've ever seen. <laughs> and it, it was just, again, great. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's very difficult to describe it, but you know what? You want to take an hour to see something that you'd normally see at the Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah. 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 That's going to be funny. It's going to be on point for the, the sort of humour and the gaming yeah. and the art you know, and all of that sort of thing. Go and see the Jolly Boat because yeah. they're really funny, great musicians. Yeah. yeah. Um, average singers, <laughs> as, as they would say. <laughs> but you will come out and go, oh, you know, that just was so funny and such a great hour. Yeah. Cool. So, it, I suppose some of these things are about taking an hour out mm -hmm. to do something slightly, slightly weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are events that people remember mm -hmm. later. You know, we, we were in the room when this happened, yeah. you know, in this particular. Yes. Uh, because there's all, a lot of it's ad lib, or mm -hmm. there's a lot of improvisation, particularly in things like the, um, the live RPG Plus, which is basically a, a, a table full of people playing a role playing game with an audience there. Yeah. And the audience are voting on whether they live or die with thumbs. Yeah, I mean, terrible that. title. You know, yeah, live doesn't tell you what it is. But what you got is a guy here, mm -hmm. yeah. and he picks yes. um, several members of the audience mm -hmm. to come and play characters. Okay, but you then have to make your name and your character up to class up. But one of them was what? What was? Oh, this is yeah. This is MMRPG, oh, wasn't it? That's oh yes, this is MMRPG, which is massively so, multiplayer on my role playing game. game. Basically, yeah, the, you get to come forward, and somebody was the uh, they just make up their own. Special, you make up your own special power yeah. and, and ability. So, some guy who was a slugger thought he was a stale. Yes, he was a stale. Oh, he was a slug. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, it, but the, the, G, the guy running this, I mean, it's just an area of stuff. And mm -hmm. there's big dice to roll, and he runs through this adventure, but mm -hmm. it's comedy, ad lib, RPG. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, MMORPG, uh, I mean, just sounds like we threw some vowels and, yeah. and a few consonants on the page. <laughs> yeah. But actually, you know what? Really funny, yeah. really good, mm. really worth it. Be prepared for a bit of wackiness because yeah. the little clips that I saw looked like they were encouraging some pretty crazy antics. Whenever yeah. you rolled a one, there was sadness across the audience. Whenever you rolled a twenty, there were shirts coming off and yeah. there was <laughs> people waving and wailing at the back. It was like it went from a nice serene event to just a football match in the space of two seconds <laughs> yeah. in the space of an yeah. ice roll. But again, because uh, these guys are so good at this improv, mm -hmm. they know what the audience is like. Yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna judge and put this to where the audience yeah. is. So you haven't got to worry that your shirt's coming off. <laughs> yeah. I did say to him, it's probably not the best clip to put on. <laughs> However, you know, we, when we went, I mean, we had, we had a, a great time, and we were there sort of reasonably late at night mm -hmm. for the fringe one we went to. But um, getting involved in this, the live RPG Plus yes. is the go on. You describe that one. Well, that that there is a, again, it's a, a role playing game happening mm -hmm. yeah. sort of thing with them sitting at the table. They'll all, there'll be a selection, there'll be guests and mm -hmm. things. Um, invite different, we invite different people, celebrities and things to play. But again, the audience are very much involved in this. Yeah. Pretty much most of the encounters that happen, most of the monsters they have to fight, the outcome of mm -hmm. things, with the treasure items they find, whatever it is, are pretty much determined by a fair amount of audience yeah. interaction. Almost none of this stuff are you yeah. just sat watching. Yeah, yeah no, no cool. there's a lot of interaction. Yeah, you, you're, you're always involved. Um, I mean, the guy, like run, life. the guy that runs that is... Um, uh, it's Sirenscape. Sirenscape mm -hmm. do the, the sound effects sounds, yes. for, yeah. for yeah. Pathfinder and for so there's a lot of that training create. as well. So yeah. as things are happening in the game, uh, mm -hmm. it's pressing the relevant buttons mm. for different sound effects to, to happen. Yeah. And screeching. The, and, these uh, events are great yeah. when you're a bit gamed out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you need a bit of a lift. 
yeah, yeah a bit of energy, energy, great, energy, energy, great for, like, and, and you know, it, so and, and you always get a seat, mm-hmm. yeah. which is always great, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, like Nightmare Live. Who doesn't love Nightmare? This is a childhood one for me. Like this yeah. is this the old helmet on and the, the screen and them standing there one step to the left and they step to the right and fall down a hole. You're like, oh, <laughs> come on, I'm Jerry! <laughs> I actually have seen the live version of this. Yes. Uh, when we were living in England, my mm-hmm. my friend uh, Swampy, we called him. Mm-hmm. Jumped in on the Kickstarter. Okay. And we actually got to go and see the live show in Camden. That's awesome. Front row seats. It was actually hilarious because when we walked in, we saw the front row and the seats were filling mm-hmm. up. So we just sat down. And eventually, one of the people running at it, running it, came up to us and went, No, 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 you guys are meant to be up at the front. So the people in the front row got kicked out of the seats and we all sat down in them. Wow. But fantastic show. Definitely worth watching. I actually have pictures of me with the, the helmet on. <laughs> I must admit, I don't know if I'd be brave enough. I think I'd be, if with the helmet on, I'd be nervous. Like, I'm going to mess up. You always feel like when you're the only person who can't see anything, everyone else is seeing something you're not. You kind of feel like... They're all like... Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. You're standing there and a hundred people have disappeared leaving you in your room. Well, the, the, the question is, if you're up on stage, are you imagining the audience naked or are they imagining you naked? As long as they haven't stripped me naked with my helmet on, I'm okay. They can imagine yeah, whatever that's, they want. So that's yeah. a different t- t- ticket category. <laughs> 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 okay, so wrong expo event. Um, yeah, live pandemic, I suppose, to mention as well. So yeah, yeah board game, popular cooperative game again with a celebrity sort of play playing it, and you as the audience, the fourth player. And this, and I love on, that. On so, you know, thing, four yeah. player games where you have three guest stars who yeah. everyone's going to know and recognize and enjoy, but you as a hundred people or whatever it's going to be, yeah. take that fourth seat together. Yeah. And it's it's that audience mentality is everyone like, should we screw them over? Should we actually help <laughs> yes. them? It's, it's something that a dice roll or a rule book yeah. can't yeah. imitate. Yeah. And even telling you guys about it now, you have to be there mm. to yeah. feel the vibe in the room to really twist everything and, and have the most yeah. fun. If, if you haven't tried any of these things, I just encourage you to pick one and go and try it yeah. this year. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I can tell you this. Once you've tried one, next year you'll try more. Yeah. Mm. I can guarantee it because... Because they are quality acts. Mm-hmm. They, you know, the, these are guys. I mean, John Robinson has packed audiences of ten thousand. Wow! You know, he's he's done insomnia where he's got the whole hall. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, um, as we say, Guy uh, Crosby. I think he's going to, you know, rise to that level mm-hmm. of star. Yeah. I mean, these guys. Yeah, Jolly Boat are great. These are quality acts. Live Nightmare, Pandemic. These, mm-hmm. You know, um, these are these are not amateurs having mm-hmm. a go. No. Yeah, and um, you know, and the fact is, is you won't see these guys at the the ticket price for these yeah. anywhere else. No, not mm-hmm. You know, you you go and see John Roberts somewhere else, mm-hmm. and you're going to be paying fifteen twenty pounds a ticket. Yeah. yeah, and here we we you know it's just part of and you know you know mm-hmm. fairly cheap for you to go and yeah. be part of that experience. I mean, one of the other things we want to mention, which is I've heard about recently. As in half an hour ago. Oh, well, well, okay. <laughs> so, Richard, you should make the announcement. We've got an, another yes. live event. So, Ian, Ian Livingston, one of the uh, yeah. writers of the Fighting mm-hmm. Fantasy uh, book Tuck series, yeah. uh, is going to be doing a live um, Fighting Fantasy reading with John Robertson. Oh, the Dark my word. Playing, playing the adventure. So, uh, oh, okay. that should be pretty cool. He, to, apparently, uh, he's you know, going to demonstrate yeah. the five finger. Page holding, holding, page holding technique. technique. I don't want to choose <laughs> ancient, this option the, until, the, I, the, until the I kung fu. It. Oh yes, the the ancient kung fu of fighting fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, Sorry. this I cannot miss. Yep. Oh no, no. I, Anybody I who likes this. likes the fighting fantasy. Yeah. Get on there right now. Get those tickets. No, we can't. Right now, right now. Put them on. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, well, we, yes, we're we, yeah. we're about to announce that. So yeah, I, yes. I literally right, found right. out when Richard mentioned it in passing. Oh, and not told me. Yeah. He's too cool as Richard. Just, oh, oh, I mean, yeah, just you know, cool. it's just going to be one of the most so interesting. I think of... that is going to be. You know, be you've cool. got Ian Livingston actually reading the excerpts. Yeah. For, I mean, what's that I like? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and John Robinson doing whatever he's going to be doing. But, but which one? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, oh, which, which one? one? Well, could be one. Of, could is, be what? It could be. A, it could be a new one. Could yeah, be which one? one? I, I, I don't know. know. That would be options. Would you rather yeah. he went back and did one from your childhood, or would you rather he did one brand new? Yeah. yeah. City of Thieves would be good though. Oh, so yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Okay. Forest of Doom. Yeah. Oh, don't tempt me. Starship thing now. Horse Peril. What about what about Death Trap Dungeon? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Well, maybe. 
So there's going to be about 10 of these on a different book for everyone. Is that what we're saying? Get, get Ian on the phone and say, we need to so stretch this Basically, out. you're going to need like a 10-year contract here. Yes, yes, so, so the thing to do with this is, if you want to know about mm -hmm. it, or any of the news, yeah. if you go on our website, sign up on the newsletter. Mm -hmm. But the newsletter has streams now. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to get everything about everything. So if you yeah. want to know about live events or RPGs, mm -hmm. you can sign up and you'll just get that. Gotcha. Or the Weekly Digest. Mm -hmm which um, I suppose is similar to your weekend, mm -hmm, which just yeah. summarises um, the stuff from it, from yeah. this week. So yeah. that way you don't get flooded with lots of emails. Right. Right. It's much more targeted, mm -hmm. much more, um, you know, on what you want. Because yeah. to be perfectly honest, we found that if we st we would send everything to everybody mm. and really they were just dying Too under much. the swamp so of much, information. Yeah. Yeah. But I would be keeping an eye out for this because yeah, yeah. knowing Richard, the first I'll know about is when he sends a newsletter out. Mm. <laughs> but I think this this may be saying just just so you know, we don't reserve tickets. So if I want to go, I've got to see it and then go and buy a ticket because mm. uh, we want to make sure everybody gets an equal chomp at it. Yes. Yeah, None definitely. For you. Oh no, <laughs> too mean. Go um, on, delete order. It all sounds very weird. It all sounds very wonderful. I must yes. admit, it, it, it's it's just a fantastic array of stuff. Um, okay, well, let us know, guys, what you're thinking about seeing, which which event you'd have your eye on. If there's any childhood TV shows that you think should be brought back, we'll get these guys to go to Fringe and find it for you. A bit of Fun House. I like Pat Shark. Can I have Fun oh, House? Oh, dude. Get <laughs> right in the childhood. Right, right there. <laughs> yeah. I love the bit of fun. That would be great at UK Games Expo. Um, I don't know that amount of slime, though. It's like Dunge, yeah. Uh, oh, Dunge, is big... Dunge, is Dunge is good. Dunge is good. Dunge is good, yeah. All right. I thought the I always thing... wanted to do Gladiator. Oh. Because oh. we thought that would be a good conflict resolution for the company. We had Vikings last year. Yeah. yeah. Are, are, we, are we actual, actual pugil year? sticks? Yes, Vikings should be coming this year. Yes. Uh, I think we're also looking at an Orc village. Yes. Orc village. Wow. Yes. And there is some talk yeah. of wolves. Wolves? Not Wolverhampton Wanderers, yeah. oh, okay. because oh, be still we, my we can afford them, it's only because they haven't gone up yet. But <laughs> it's just uh, like actual wolves that you can pet. I'd do that. Mm. I would do that. Uh, before lunch, before you smell of like burger and stuff. No, like, no, no. You, <laughs> after you smell of burger, no, because no, then no. they want to give you a cuddle. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we are looking at those, Claire, but, but whatever you, don't tell the NEC because we haven't mentioned it to them yet. I, uh, yeah. The old wolf insurance, the old. Uh... <laughs> well, we we did, we did have the the long ship lake insurance thing last year, didn't we? Yes, yes, that was a that was, yes. We we couldn't do that because but in order to put a long boat on the lake, which we wanted to do, yeah. they, we we had to get a captain's license yeah. and. Uh, build 20,000 pound pontoons and we were just like it's only a boat <laughs> what about if we just burnt it <laughs> what a viking funeral yes yeah, da, da, that. Da, da, da. <laughs> that, that was actually cheaper we could have burnt it in the lake for less than putting one person on it and rowing it across wow. really wow because it, well it, it then became water transport and we needed like the same sort That's of crazy. paperwork as p and o ferries <laughs> <laughs> Viking crossings coming soon. <laughs> I don't know. We'll get a deal. So next time we just might say to the Vikings, just don't mention it. Yeah. The NEC won't notice. Yeah, just the brakes feel sorry. <laughs> we'll just get SeaCat or PO to sponsor it. We'll just get a sponsored longboat, big seal. They'll be great. They'll cover it. Vikings won't have that. Uh, I thought if you're ever going to see the, the PO logo on a Viking <laughs> shield here. The Ragnar versus PO, two longboats going at it. I'd, I'd pay to watch that. Watch that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, well, that's a bit more weird and wonderful that we can currently do. But look, let us know in the comments, guys, what you're enjoying to see. We're going to be bringing you more about UK Games Expo. Do go and keep track of the website to see all the events as they do get added. And thank you again. And guys, we will uh, catch you again soon. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Take control of armies from the five kingdoms of Arcania and vie for the throne of the ancient king in Wrath of Kings. Master your skills on the battlefield over on BeastsOfWar.com. It's going to be amazing. It's yes. going to be awesome. And if yeah. you have any suggestions for great pub games for after the event, to actually sit down with your mates at a gaming event and play in the pub, get them in the comments below. I want to know. Werewolf. Werewolf. Yeah. 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 Do, you know what the, do you know what I love there? Because I can cast, I can categorically guarantee you this happened. 
he's just started talking about pub and, and gaming and stuff after the event. And both Ben and Sam and myself have taken a sharp and take a breath because we know how much work this is going to be yeah. this year. <laughs> this is actually my first UK Games Expo. Is it? This is my first ever UK Games oh, Expo. Oh, this is a biggie. This yeah, is right. a biggie. This show is, is this show is hard work, I've got to say. It, it is yeah. it is a, a mountain to climb. And we're going to be doing a live stream um, almost yeah. the whole way through this one. Okay. With uh, uh, new games coming in and doing 45-minute slots with us uh, okay. to, to talk about their games. It's going to be mad. Mm -hmm. It's going to be mad. You but guys, we all get to run around with walkie-talkies, which is really cool. Yeah. You guys did invite me along to the last one, but it was quite literally the day after I arrived back in the country <laughs> yeah. from Asia. And I was like... No, thank you. I want to live. Yeah. No, it was more along the lines of no. I want to to, to like go comatose into my own bed for a week. Thank you. Yeah. All. The and, jet lag was real, and he mm. did. But it is amazing, Sam. You're gonna love I, it. I can't as, wait. As events go, wait. this is just, oh, yeah, the it's layout just out of is, this world. It's beautiful. Right. Some of the stuff they have on around it is Before beautiful. we move on to prizes, yes. Ben has a couple of kickstarters for us. What do you got for us, Ben? Ben, what have we got this week? Okay, so the first Kickstarter we're going to be looking at is from Printable, uh, printable Scenery, mm -hmm. and this is a new range of uh, 3D printable terrain that you can print off at home. Oh. They are putting up a whole bunch of new STL files for you to get uh, stuck into, and they are all themed around the idea of naval adventures, and it's called the Lost Island. Oh, God, okay. So yeah, yeah, they have three different sets for you to go and check out. Uh, there is one called the Lost Ships, which comes with two huge ships. Oh, pirates. Well some small I see pirates. Well. Yeah, this is definitely Sorry, for the pirates out there that mm -hmm. want to do get stuck into like um, Frostgrave, Ghost Archipelago, and stuff like that. Yeah, there is also Port Winterdale, which gives you a nice home port to go back to after you've been off on your adventures, which comes with a whole bunch of different buildings for you to pick up that come in different sizes and, and shapes oh. and stuff. And then there's also possibly the coolest set of the bunch, which is called the Lost Tribe set. Okay. And this takes you off into the native wilderness where you're going off to fight oh. against uh, hungry cannibals and all kinds of different things like that. Oh, do you know what that's straight out of? King Kong. Yes. 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 That is yeah, yeah. straight Skull out Island. of King Kong. Oh, printable scenery, I love you. <laughs> I have been planning on picking up uh, a, a King Kong recently. I've been desperate. Right. To play a King Kong game, okay? So because just dress me up in a monkey suit. And... No, I have found, I have found a King Kong. No, I'm kicking myself. I haven't bought it yet, but yeah. I've found a King Kong this high, right? Okay. So he is pretty much exactly to scale with a 28 millimeter, 30 millimeter miniature. Mm. Okay. So I want to do um, a World War II oh. um, uh, U.S. Marines, okay? Right. The, the guys in the Pacific, okay? Yeah. On, I wanted to do them on King Kong's Island. This is exactly the terrain that I need. Okay, so if you can imagine your uh, your U.S. Marines running around on this terrain mm. with King Kong stomping the I, out of them, I, I, it would be amazing, man. I think you need to make it World War One because then you can get the iconic biplanes there as well. Oh no 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 no, man! Yeah, but what we could what we could do is get some uh we'll try and get some mustangs or something like that there and get some world uh, war ii planes yeah, in there, some P51s in there. Um, what we could also do is we could um uh, we're, we're not using that terrain the other option that we have oh i just see what's unlocked let's let's have a look through the stretch goals while i'm talking about this yeah. but what we could also do then is get the foreground city terrain oh, okay and do almost like a new york city yeah where you're gonna uh, where you could have the marines on the streets of new york city trying to fight off uh, a king kong but just oh, look at this. I love, I love the boathouse. Oh. The boathouse is so clever. The yeah, one of the break. things I wanted to say about actually about the boats that you get in mm -hmm. this set, they actually come so you print them in two different layers. Yeah. So you can actually um, separate them off so you can play around in the interiors of the boats as well, which oh, I thought was a very, nice. very neat uh, option. And it also probably means that it's a little easier to print them as well, I'd imagine. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Oh, these are fabulous. The vomiting tree. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> St stackable rocks. Are we at, are we at the causeway? Uh, fences, tusk fences. Charlie's doghouse. Charlie's doghouse, great. Cargo, Cargo piles, piles are absolutely fantastic. Oh uh, yeah. W Warren, can we get your three D printer up and running? Yeah, but the three D printer is up and running. I Good. just need yeah. an excuse to use it. No, well, you've got one. Uh, actually, I'd I'd rather grab a, a resin bath printer. I have been looking at it. I yeah, have been I looking at it. I'm, I'm... It, was, it, it was sorry. It was interestingly something I wanted to actually ask about this yes. campaign. Like. Would it actually be viable for us to print some of this stuff on the one that we have? Is yeah, that like probably. doable, or do you need something a little bit more high end? No, or? no, no, no. I, uh, the the one we the, the printer we have is not bad. Okay, 
Um, it, it, it's um, it's an i3 clone, so yeah. um, it's um, i3 is like an open source. Mm. Um, it, yeah, it's like an open source so hardware design. So that's an i3 frame then. Yeah, well, it's an i. Well, yeah. The, so what what they did the Prusa. The guys behind Prusa created an open source platform mm. for creating 3D printing hardware. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And then a bunch of other Chinese manufacturers and stuff plugged into that and then yeah. started to create their own versions of it. Yes. Okay. So what we have is an AnyCubic um, i3 uh, version of this um, yeah. uh, this 3D printing platform. Now, it, it's okay. It's not great. If I, if I was doing it again, I would, I would probably go for a Prusa i3. But I'm also quite keen to have a look at one of these um resin bath ones because they're starting to become quite affordable as well yeah and we've seen the results that some people have been getting out of them they're yeah. gorgeous the, no the, those results are from pretty expensive ones we're looking at about five grand um uh, per machine okay. do we have that in the piggy bank no we don't have that in the piggy bank we, we'd need a kickstarter of our own yeah. to get something like that in the <laughs> right piggy bank. kickstarter but, um, starting but uh, do you know what we, 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 uh, uh, for the longest time i've wanted to do some uh, some stuff with the guys at Printable Terrain. I'd love to do some more content and stuff on this. So yeah. we'll reach out to the guys at uh, Printable Scenery because they've been, they've for a long time have said you know they wanted to help support the the Beast of War community. So we'll we'll, we'll talk. Mm. We'll talk. But dear God, yeah, King Kong Terrain guys, King Kong Terrain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like oh, oh, sold pirates. I'm happy. Well, right. What's next, Ben? Before we move on, uh, well, wait. Before we move on, Justin's had an idea. Final comment. No. Yes. Final comment on this. This particular type of Kickstarter is great because how many times do you buy a set of terrain on Kickstarter and you want one extra bit of mm -hmm. a certain type? Yes. With this, it's the files. You just set it to run and you can have all the extra bits that you need to do your layout however you want. Yeah. Yeah. Final I absolutely thought. completely agree with that. Okay, Ben, what's next? So, yeah, the next up is some more terrain. And this is one that'll uh, probably, um, uh, oh. it, well, I would imagine Jerry and Lloyd are probably going to quite enjoy this stuff. Uh -huh. But yeah, this is by Renaissance, Renaissance Miniatures, and this is a range of 28 mil Viking and Anglo-Saxon Dark Age terrain for you to use in your oh, games like Saga and, and Blood Eagle and all those kind of things. They have possibly the coolest looking Motten Bailey castle that I've ever seen as yeah. part of this Kickstarter, and that's sort of the, like the main focus of this. But they've also developed a whole range of other different pieces of terrain as well to go alongside it, including the likes of an Abbey Ruins. Mm -hmm. yes. There's also the River Course, which also doubles up as a moat around the outside of the Motten Bailey. Mm -hmm. They go working on ships like a Viking longship. There's an Anglo Saxon cog in there. There's a funeral ship as well that's been designed for this. They're also designing a whole bunch of um, Dark Age houses and other bits and pieces that would go into a settlement. And there's also bits and pieces of um, scatter terrain thrown into the mix as well. As I say, this is all sort of MDF work that they've been working on here in, in, in 28 mil. And it all looks very, very cool indeed. And as you see from some of the, the scenery shots where they've pulled everything together, it just looks really fantastic when you've got it all, all, all stuck up to and, uh, and ready to go. So, yeah, very cool cool little campaign this one worth checking out as well this so. is actually pretty cool that martin bailey is yeah yeah i love that one I, the one that caught my eye was actually the ruined abbey because i looked at that and i just thought that's bolomagi Thyri in valley castle is it really yeah it looks very very similar <laughs> this is this is actually some really interesting stuff here so um is it laser cut it looks laser cut to me yeah. yeah, so it's all laser cut kits that you put together. As I say, it's all MDF, MDF and sort of you know, the, the kind of typical stuff that you'd normally be picking up from a lot of the other companies out there. But as I say, it's one of the things about this that really drew me to it was the, the sort of uniqueness of a lot of their designs, especially around the, the look of the ships. And then that Motten Bailey Castle in itself just looked like an amazing project to put yeah. down on the tabletop. Yeah. Imagine the kind of sieges you could have around what that kind oh, of thing would be, yes. be really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to find a way to use those three coracles they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one I want to get a, a closer look at here for a second. Yeah. It's actually the, the cog. So if you guys want to talk amongst yourselves for a second, just yeah, scroll up to it. Is it. Oh, well, Warren, how are the holidays? Oh, it wasn't yeah. bad, Sam. Yeah. How are your holidays? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the ultimate professional, Justin. Yeah, yeah you definitely. just guys, just you no. talk among okay. yourselves. Okay, here's what I want to talk about. Okay, the fighting cog. Yeah, okay. I'm wondering how you get this curve into your, your HDF here whenever you're actually building the thing. Yeah, you sit yeah. on it. <laughs> Yeah, you <laughs> set on it. That used to be a that used to be a very high standing ship. Yes. Oh, you get what I mean because normally whenever you think HDF, you think very flat panelled. If you're building up boats, you're gonna yeah. 
carve each layer of the boat that would be the plank and then it builds up and up and up yeah this is something i've not seen before to get this sort of really natural boat curve put into the the actual side panels mm, or panels very i'm very curious to see how they've done that yep me too. it is very cool or how you actually do that when you're building it yep me me too justin mm. right. i think yeah i think you're onto something there man so Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not being sarcastic. I know you. I know you think I'm being sarcastic, but I do think you're onto something. Um, I'm not sure what, but I'm sure they they could let us know. It's 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 something that I've not seen done with HDF before. Well, have a look at the stuff. Martin Bailey. Have a look at the Martin Bailey, because uh, what, what's interesting about that is it's. Well, I thought it was no, curved. It's no, it's not curved. It is curved, but they've done it with the usual vertical panels that you would see to go around yeah. the edges on buildings. Go, go, go to the top down shot further down. There's top down shot. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll start. We'll continue yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, our yeah, holidays. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. There. <laughs> so there are curves there. Yeah, there's a the slight curve panels. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So it's section panels to, j to j do the curve. You by Jove, the man is absolutely right. When I'm right, I'm right. When he's Listen. right. He's right. I don't, know how he's, I don't know how he's done it. We will have to. We will have to reach out to them. So, Renaissance Miniatures, how do you get your boat so nice and curvy? Justin, Justin <laughs> likes curious. the curviness. I'm curious. He likes the curves, don't you, Justin? He likes the curves. Not yours. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's give away some prizes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then we'll show you how to win win one as well. Yeah. So, Infinity Week. Uh, we had eight winners. Um, yes. So the five first... Yasari Adna packs, three okay. Oyori. Right. So the oh, yeah, Yasari Adna. We had Mike. We had Matty. We had Matty Tyke on Facebook. We had Mick Mountain on Beast of War. We had Dustin Rubble on Beast of War. We had Nick Westerby on YouTube, and we had Daniel Hosek on YouTube. Guys, claim a prize. Fill that's... in that prize claim for me. Congratulations. And that's the Yasari Adna you guys just won. Mm -hmm. Right. The Oyori is uh, John Butt on Facebook. Uh, Mephiston1216 on Beast of War and Kent Snyder on YouTube. Congratulations. Fill out the claim of prize. Yeah. If you're a winner on any other platform a platform other than Beast of War, come across to beastofwar.com. On the homepage, there is a drop down in the top right corner. Yeah. And it says claim a prize. Mm. Yeah. Um, we then last week we gave away uh, a copy of Dark Crystal. Yes. Um, uh, the the winner you were to describe your own Jaeger or kaiju, or kaiju. Yeah. and uh, my Jaeger would resemble a silverback gorilla and could switch between bipedal and quadruped movement, armed with heavy ranged weaponry but excelling in close combat. Rock and roll. Oh, that sounds cool. That is an awesome Jaeger, and that was by Fail Rocks. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations. You have won yourself the Dark Crystal board game, which Jim Henson's daughter recently came out and said that she that they reckon that Dark Crystal um, uh, could be as big as Star Wars in terms of its uh, in terms of the, the size of its IP. Oh, okay. It yeah. has a huge backstory and a huge okay. forward story as well. Oh. So we only in Dark Crystal we only caught a tiny Isn't little it? glimpse of it. I yeah. love that movie so much. So it, I would love to dig into that. Back it's then. freaky. I don't know if you've watched it again recently. I have. Yeah, it is freaky. It is. It is really mm. freaky. I never watched it as a kid. That's the thing. Uh, we gave away a mat during the Prague Open. Yes. So to be specific with this prize, mm -hmm. the winner of this contest has won their choice of any six by four battle mat from the guys at Games Mat EU that can even be the double sided ones if you so choose. One mat yeah. they're up. Okay, and the winner from Beast of War was Mean Bone. Okay, this week we are giving away two portable painting stations. Well, we're giving away a big one and a little one. Yeah. Um, if you want to be in with a chance of winning it, come across to beastofwar.com mm -hmm. and in the comments, and it's completely free, just create a free account, and in the comments, yeah. tell us what your next big painting project would be um, that you might use this for. And if you don't know, make it up. <laughs> we'll be picking Best a winner. We'll it. be picking a winner at random from those entries, mm. and um, we'll be announcing that winner on next week's show. Yeah. Okay. A big thank you to the gentlemen that joined me this morning, and a massive thank you to you guys. Remember, you can join us tomorrow morning on the backstage show. We're going to be talking a little bit about. I'm going to be showing off some Star Wars models. Mm. We've got other bits and pieces. I've got my hobby time to show. Our off. topic of the day is we're exploring. Um, uh, slow grow leagues yeah and uh, kind of like journeyman leagues and things like that so we're, yeah. we've got some community feedback we're going to be talking about on that yeah so yeah uh, support beast of war buy merch and come across <laughs> we'll be looking for you see you tomorrow do it do it come across and join us backstage you know you want to please it's it's awesome and it'll become every bit more awesome if you're there with us mm. see you then guys <laughs> bye bye
Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.